Good morning. Welcome along to another day here at the Modus Super Series on this very special anniversary week, two years since this concept started as the Online Darts Live League. Chris Mason, a man who's been there from the start as well. I will get a, a few more reflections with Chris on this week and the past, but first of all, we're going to reflect on yesterday. Here's Henry Deacon with the highlights. Well, it's a day which hardly saw the players split apart. Gary Stafford put on the table 4.2, his name. He won his final game yesterday to keep himself well in contention. Meanwhile, for John Nelson, he's our ADC qualifier this week, and he was making a habit of beating the big names, including Robert Thornton, nonetheless. As for the Owl, Richie House, and the affiliative four points was a little bit less than the return he would have hoped for for the opening day's action. He'll be looking to make a bit of a push on day two. As to Lee Cox, he registered the highest average of the day yesterday, 103.66 and a 4-0 success against John Nelson. But he's one of three players tied at the top on six points, which includes Sam Kanker, who perhaps over the course of the day was the most consistent performer. But it is the Fawn who is top of the pile. Robert Thornton with his 1-4-6 to beat Lee Cox 4-0 in his opening game. He is the man to beat on day two. Thanks, Henry. Yeah, Thornton top of the table, but, but only just. Yeah, uh, it, just watching that back, everybody sort of had their little moment yesterday, but it was Robert Thornton we expected to dominate, and it just shows you towards the end of the day how fatigue set in, and... Uh, yeah, he's got it all to do today to, to remain on top. Let's just have a look at the numbers from yesterday then. This is how it played out in terms of the stats. That 146 <coughs> check out, the, the big highlight for Robert Thornton. The high winning average, though, for Lee Cox, the highest he's ever produced here, that stood out as well, didn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Be his, his previous personal best by a, a couple of points. But again, there's, there's three names up there the 146 from Thornton. Uh, the 10 data from Sam Kanket and obviously the, the high average. And, and, and John Nelson had his moments yesterday. He had a, a couple of really good performances or a couple of really couple of good, good key moments and good key legs. So, yeah, everybody got something to, to take out of the day yesterday. And they've all got something to play for today, as we'll see here when you look at the table. Just two points separating Robert Thornton at the top. Gary Stafford at the bottom. Yeah, and we didn't really expect that to, to, to be the case. Maybe, maybe that order or the amount of points the players are on, you, you could sort of uh, justify, but we, we thought John Nelson and Gary Stafford may struggle in that field because it, it is a, a very strong field at the top, but they're, they're right in the mix. And, you know, priority today is to try and establish yourself at the top and almost try and gap yourself so you've got a bit of breathing space tomorrow, which is why we traditionally call... Tuesday moving day. Yeah, and the top three play the bottom three in the first three fixtures, so they could all be tied on the same amount of points after that. And we'll see if there's been any movement in the betting. Take a look at the odds. Robert Thornton, the favourite. Now, Houston had been slight favourite before that. Do you uh, back that change? Yeah, well, we, <clears throat> we were a little bit surprised when we seen that yesterday, that the Housen was favourite to win Group A, but I think it was Thornton was favourite to win, win, the, win the actual week itself. Uh, yeah, I, could, I can understand the movement on reflection here yesterday, but again, Richie Alverson was a very, very late call-up, so he wouldn't have been prepared to play yesterday morning. He, he just... He was getting ready to play Thursday and Friday's uh, session. Uh, and, of course, Sunday, a long way down, a long drive for Robert Thornton. Gary Stafford, the same, uh, a last-minute call-up because, of course, Neil Duff and Charles Barstow were stuck on the Isle of Man. I hope they're back now, anyway. They were supposed to see them later in the week. Fingers crossed. Uh, fingers crossed for Aces Acca as well. You've made your selections. Just talk us through these. Yeah, I, th I think we'll see a, a much better version of, of Robert Thornton today. He'll be refreshed. He'll have benefited from, from playing all day yesterday. Uh, I think he'll get an early break of throw against uh, Nelson. Uh, Nelson Housen, I think we'll see again. I think Richie Housen will benefit of being playing all day yesterday. And then Kanker at Stafford, a really impressive with Sam yesterday. And uh, he is a big 180 hitter, as he showed yesterday. Yeah, can be a maximum machine, can at times. Well, the first match is Richie Housen against Lee Cox. So without further ado, we will get the action underway. Chris is going to head downstairs to join Henry Deacon. Yeah, thank you very much, Chris. A very good morning, everyone. Welcome to day two here at the Moda Super Series, a day we like to call moving day. And the way that this table is so conjoined together, well, quite literally anything could possibly happen. We kick off with the duel that ended yesterday's action as Lee Cox takes on Richie Housen. And it was the man from London, Lee Cox, 
the county captain from that particular part of the world. They played a 4-2 success, doing so with an 81 average and 4 out of 12 on his doubles. Meanwhile, for Housen, the 57-year-old from Raynham, the World Seniors Championship finalist from this year is the Avil. If you're looking to kick on on Tuesday, as Chris rightly alluded to up on the balcony, he was a late replacement due to the inclement weather conditions first on the though, Isle of Man, leaving to throw first. both Chaz Game Barstow on. and Neil, B Neil Duff stranded on the island. I believe that the flights and the ferries have managed to sort themselves out. Inclement, is that the same as windy? Yeah, it's a, it's a posh word for windy. In short, it was blowing a hoolie. But it is Halson who gets us underway. Charlie Corsafine has braved the inclement Portsmouth weather conditions to referee. It was a beautiful walk in this morning. Uh, clear skies. It was a bit chilly and there was a bit of a breeze about, but far from unpleasant. Richie Halson was the big favourite for this one, wasn't he? 8 to 15, 11 to 8 about Lee Cox. But it was Lee that won this tie. Yesterday, well, our final match of the session, he won it 4-2. Although it was Richie who had the five-point higher average. 140. I think we'll see a better version of all the players today. I think especially the two players who had to take that last-minute replacement, Richie Housen and, and Gary Stafford. It's hard to come into something when your prep time is virtually none. We see it in other 100. tournaments, don't we, where the last minute will turn it. OK, you've got that freedom, but you still feel undercooked. Yeah, it's... I, I, as I said yesterday, I thought Richie would have been doing 85. his prep work. Monday, Richie Tuesday, required Wednesday 161. For, for his inclusion in Thursday and Friday. And that, of course, was cut short late on Sunday night. Right, mate, can you, uh, can you come in tomorrow morning 41. at 7.30 a.m.? Fortunately... Didn't turn down the, the offer. 57. Cox played Richie required 120. Yesterday, didn't he? That high average, as me and Murph mentioned, uh, a personal best, 103.66 in a 4-0 in a win. And what was, what was equally as impressive as the average was, was the finishing. Four from 60. Four. Lee required 160. We asked the question as to what Lee Cox will do in 2023 in terms of the darting sphere and a good week here this week could just set him fair 25. for the adventures that Richie is to come 60. because he's here he won't be in Germany for the Chinese tour this weekend as Richie Housen goes for tots for the opening leg of the day and now double 10 Falsy bit of a fly Lee require 135 going ball here 25 leaves 110 that leaves 85 45 for tops ooh yeah, I'd be disappointed. A bit early for one of those types of finishes, isn't it? 69. <laughs> 9.30 in the Richie morning, leg one. 14. <clears throat> Get the ring rust out of the way. Thought that was in. No score. Lee requires 66. Opportunity to get a break of throw from absolutely nowhere. Well, you might as well stay there. That leaves double 18. Game shot on the first leg. Gets, and, uh, Lee Cox. A very... Very early break. And that'll feel like a real steal as far as Lee Cox is concerned because Richie Houston Second was leg, it's in cruise control first. of large portions of that leg. Had a number of darts at double. Four, in fact. But he couldn't convert. And Cox, at the time of asking, takes for an advantage and leads 1-0. Yeah, we've seen some indifferent finishing yesterday. It was, it was uh, quite an issue for a, a lot of the players. They're the only one that went four 100. out of four yesterday was Lee Cox. Thornton in match number one was four from six. Very, very tidy. 85. Of course, Sam Kankit, best leg of the day yesterday, a 10 darter. He also had an average of a 100.99, and that was with seven darts missed at a double. It just shows you what or how high his ceiling is. 99. John Nelson had a... 50% on the doubles, a 4 out of 8 in a 4-1 win over Sam Kankett. 60. Just get the sense that this first game today is oh so vital for Richie Housen. Because it's so tight on the table, three players on six, three players on four. The four-point buffer is going to feel big. 
95. Yeah, you, you don't want that feeling that you're chasing. Because if you... If, if the table starts to get a little bit disjointed, you can feel like you just can't close that gap. 46. Thinking there from Lee, leaving 170. Be ironic if the big fish is hit against the carp fisherman. <laughs> He's caught plenty of big fish, which he hasn't. 100. Absolute Lee you require 170. Eighty five. Richie require one hundred and seven. Well the break back to lower this game back up at one apiece. Double eighteen himself. Game and shot on the it. second lay. And that Richie is Housen. the way to break back. A fifteen darter, our first ton plus out of the day. Third leg it's Richie to throw first. Game on. And he's effectively squared up after what happened in the opening leg. Well, he's literally squared up after what happened in the opening leg. What am I talking about? He's, he's just cancelled it out, hasn't he? That's it. And that's what you've got to do. And that's the, the men mentality I like about House. And doesn't tend to carry disappointment over into the next leg. Seems to get rid of it quite 55. quickly. 55. And, and I suppose as a fisherman, when you lose a fish that you think's a big one, you can't just sort of chuck your rod down. You've got to... Get back out there and go out, try and get another one, and that's how he how he plays darts. Strange analogy, I know, but if you fish, you'll you'll get me. One hundred. I had one come off. It was about this. I didn't. But that's a typical fisherman gag. Sixty. I can say that well, you can't see in the commentary box, but what Chris showed me, yeah, it was huge. <laughs> Our first of the day. One hundred and eighty. Yesterday we saw twenty-six maximums. That's the first of day two. Fifty-nine. The actual tally for the entire series is just under eleven hundred. One thousand and eighty-five now. Following that attempt from Housen. Saddle. Need to get a life. Even though all the stats teams around here are too good. One hundred and forty. 140 leaves housing on 38 cocks. Nine darts in. Still in the 300s, but he ain't going to be for much longer. 140. Richie required 38. Needed a, a final trouble there to Game put a tiny the bit of pressure. Lane. But all around Richie this Housen. Is a, an, an exact response we were talking about. In, instead of dwelling on the disappointment of leg one, he's responded with Fourth a 15 leg, darter to and first. a 13 Game darter on. with a max. <laughs> Sixty. I just wonder whether his exploits at the World Seniors 100. last year just given him a belief that he feels as if he's a, a top player now, that he's in a he's in a league of his own kind of thing. There's a there's a belief within his game once again. Absolutely. He is playing 140 quite wonderfully right now, averaging well into the 90s, over 94 after throwing 21 darts in leg one. 40. We look at the score in power pack. Seven ton pluses, 3140 pluses, and of course that max that we saw in the previous day. Well, we could see another max here. Lots of room. 140. He's finding a treble a visit and he just keeps putting Lee Cox under it. 81. Richie require 121. Well, he's had him on. I know he lost the, the opening leg, but he's had Lee on the back foot, hasn't he? He's, he's dominated him and it was only dominated him so far and it was only 89. missed doubles that is why he's not throwing for the match here. It'd be on the 
85. Berger doing just Richie that. If he can convert this 32. double 16. She's left after 12. Not a bad guide for him. Game shot on the, the perfect fourth guide for him. Richie House. And that is 3 1. That's a 14 dart. So the average just under 95 now. And he throws for the opening rubber of the day to Fifth cancel leg. out that throw first. win for Cox in the final match of yesterday's session. And it would mean that it would be four players tied on six points at the top of the table. That could become five if Gary Stafford gets the better of what we Well, actually, there is a scenario where all six players could be tied on points at the end of the first round if John Nelson can get the better of Sam Kankit in game three. 25. stuff. Oh, a bit like the, the darts that Richie Housen's throwing here. Okay, he lost the opener and then 15, 13 and 14. He's averaging nearly 97. 60. Easy one. Well, Sam Housen was here. He won Group A, but then so he did to be eliminated quite early on on the Saturday night. It's, I think, 57. something that's on his bucket list this year. He's had a couple of trials and tribulations when it's come to the Saturday night finale. 100. And I think when you consider everything that he's done over the last 12 months, that really would be a feather on the cap if he could get a weekly title and would be a great addition to Champions Week if indeed he did get that. Oh, he has one intention and one intention only, and that is winning 60. this week. Incredible that we're on Series 3 and Week 6 already. Day 2 of Group A. 45. Well, joining us for the first time, welcome along. Watching on the 140 Sporty Stuff TV channel. Welcome along if you're outside of the UK and watching via our YouTube channel. Please subscribe. That thumbs up. 45. Don't hit that alert bell. Richie Lots required 44. On our YouTube channel. And of course, if you're a social media user, at MSS Darts on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for the match. Game, In it shot, goes. and the match, Richie Housen. Wraps it up with an 18-dart holder throw and four consecutive legs for Richie Housen. And that is his best average so far in Group A in his opening match on day two. A 92-26, 1-180, 40% on the doubles, and six scores of a 144 more. And he does top the table on six points alongside Thornton and Kankit. Well... Thornton's up next. He faces Gary Stafford.
Welcome back to the Modus Super Series, where Richie Housen enjoyed a 4-1 win over Lee Cox before the break, making it four players tied on six points in the Group A table. Next up, Gary Stafford faces Robert Thornton, and Stafford got a bit of a surprise result when Thornton really struggled in the last match of yesterday, losing it 4-1, and a repeat of that result today would mean that Stafford would also go on to six points in this increasingly difficult-to-call group. A win, though, for Thornton would see him pull clear at the top of the table, the exact same scenario he had when he faced Stafford yesterday. Let's see if he can do it this time in the company of Chris Mason and Henry Deacon. Yeah, thank you very much, Chris. And I think in this compelling scenario, we have so many players tied at the top of the table. Whoever can get that march and get themselves solely in front gives themselves a huge advantage. That's exactly what Robert Thornton can do here against Gary Stafford. Now, he will be upset about what happened in that final game yesterday because he could have been a scenario here where he could have opened up a gap of possibly four points at the top of the table right now if he got the better of Gary Stafford. But as things stand, a win here for the four. And he will go two points clear at the top with Sam Kankit still to take on John Nelson. Our ADC qualifier, but we've learned from John Nelson over the course of yesterday is the higher up the opponent are in the league table, the better he seems to play. But what are we expecting from Gary Stafford? Because it's a similar scenario to... Richie House in the respect of it was a late call up for him Gary to yesterday. Throw first. Maybe just game on that day he can kind of get yesterday at the day out of the way where he's had a day to play and now he can maybe relax into it a bit more. Yeah, absolutely. You can play with a, a bit more freedom today. He's got the nerves and, and like you say, the the late call up out of the way. He'll feel 55. a lot more comfortable today, but he'll be taking on a a different version of Robert Thornton. Yesterday he is he played the opening match of the day and won 4-0 with a 9109. That match we were discussing, which was the penultimate match of the session yesterday, Thornton was just out on his feet. You could see he just had nothing left and it was a it was a, a real disappointing 60. performance. And well, knowing Robert like I do, he will want to um yeah, right the wrongs. This could be emphatic. AZ five. But he will have that confidence of 100 getting one over on him. But how much, how much that will will benefit him, I'm not sure. I say he's going to get a completely different version of Robert 97. Thornton this morning. Our next matchup, which will complete the first cycle of matches, will be John Nelson against Sam Kankett. 58. And Housen, Thornton and Kankett will feel like They've got to win those opening matches. 54. Just to, just to put down a marker to the rest of the field. Put down a marker and try and give themselves a bit of a cushion. 92. It's tables like this, which is why we call it moving day, because anything could possibly happen. Some player who's second in the table could finish bottom, and likewise, it could go the other way round. 51. Gary, you require 136. Now, one of them would have left himself a dart at double eight. Not to be on this occasion, but that is an Robert, excellent lead to leave himself on double 16. Thornton then 74. 20 for tops. An opening leg breaker throw. Game shot on the first leg. There it is. Robert Thornton. Yeah, no mistake. Robert Thornton, when he is on his game. Second leg, it's Robert to throw first. In. Game on. Absolutely effortlessly. One hundred and thirty five. You almost feel that one of the players has got to exert some kind of dominance and, and sort of you know walk into that practice room twenty two like, like a peacock. Judging on the fact of where he's won recently, can Robert Thornton go in there if, if he wanted to and have that sort of aura about him because he's 60. recently off the back of that world seniors win. He dominated that tour last year. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in the last 13 months, he's 180 won a World Seniors match play and two World Seniors championships. He's got every 59. right to strut his stuff. Favorite in your eyes for that Champion of Champions event in a couple of weeks? Yeah, it's hard to hard to look past him, but you never know. 
121. I'm, I'm more fascinated to see who, who comes out of that qualifier and, and wins that golden ticket. Because with all due respect, you, you know, you're not playing the, the old version of Phil Taylor. At some point, he will either throw the towel in or start practicing. 138. Robert, you require 127. I can't see him sitting around just turning up and and getting beaten. 99. It's like seeing, it's a bit like Gary seeing Muhammad 40. Ali in, in his latter years and you're like, pff, against Larry Holmes and Trevor Burbick, you're like, oh no. Talking about, oh no. The vice smiler, <laughs> Gary Stavis, speaking, here we go again. Game there shot on the is. second leg. Hallelujah, Gary, Gary Stafford. Well, the double tens are friends. I'd like to see that again because I don't even, I don't even know that was going anywhere near the double. Third leg, it's Gary to throw first. It's not, the Game dart on. hasn't gone in. It's rested on the other dart. It was a fifteen dart break of throw. One eighty in the leg as well. Seventy and a double ten. <laughs> a rare double ten. There is a god beneath this church. Sixty-eight. Lovely dark that. Ninety-nine. Disappointed there. Dark one was sat up inviting. 123. Referee there, Charlie Corstefine. Be doing his first Premier League night shortly, aren't he? It's been a... Oops. 39. Slipped out the hand. Happens more than you probably realise, especially when you're practising, but you don't often 45. see it. 45. On TV. Bit of a slipper. Norton has not punished. That's more like it, Gary. 85. Another Gary did the business yesterday. Mm. Gary Anderson qualifying for his first Euro Tour in something like seven years. Which is ridiculous, really, when you think about it. Yeah, well, he, he chose not to not to play in them, didn't he? I believe that's the one you're doing, isn't it? The one yes. he qualified for? 26. Yeah. Robert, you require 132. Gary. I don't know what's the biggest US, Euro Tour story. Gary Anderson's return or you being on the Euro Tour. Thornton, a man who's graced many Euro Tour stage, wants the Game bullseye. The third Finds the bullseye. Robert and crack open the corpse because it's a champagne finish for Robert Thornton. Brilliant response. Falls it like it's Robert to throw 15 first. Break Game back on. for Stafford in leg two and then a. Uh, Third consecutive break of throw for Thornton on the real showbiz 55. shot on 3 2. Is Cheltenham the sort of champagne cool popping place at 10 in the morning? It's more kind of Royal Ascot, isn't it? 24. Oh, I don't know. At least champagne and Guinness. Plenty of Guinness. Was it 260,000 pints? There you go, mate. Well done. 96. Did you do the... Was it quiz night last night? Yeah. I'd do you want to talk about it? I'd like to talk about the fact that I got the bonus... The only person in the whole room out of 2017 to get the bonus 60. question right. What was it? So there's five reds that are left on the snooker table. It's the highest possible break you can make, which is 67. Five by eight. 40. Add the 27 for the colours. 67. Free ball. Oh, that would be pedantic. <laughs> but it is true. Yeah. But uh, tradi uh, on normal circumstances. The only person who got that right. 60. In... Yeah, we won. We had to spin the wheel. And uh, the designated driver got given a, a token for Jaeger Bosch. Because that's really going to work, isn't it? So he just had the, the bomb and not the Jaeger. <laughs> I was wondering why I was awake all night. One Max Stafford is second in the game. Well, one thing for sure, when he gets that throw right, he looks very, very tidy. And he just, Thornton just can't, can't find that key leg to try and 76. gap himself.
And he's left himself plenty to do. He's left himself a finish, but Stafford here with a 137 can. Well, now he just needs a treble. 51. One. Robert, you require 131. Looking for trouble 17 tops, tops there. 91. Eventually Gary, you require tops. 126. Four 19s and ball, six 19s, double six. It's a good marker. Or guide. 46. Robert, you require 40. A free one late. Hasn't missed a double yet, but he has now. You jinxed that, didn't you? 30. And this is a truly bona fide chance now for Gary, Gary Stafford to level this 80. game up to accrue the break back to bring this match back on throw. It's going to be the solitary dart at tots. But are those first two darts a bit of a hindrance? 60. Might well have been, you know. Robert, you require 10. And so Thornton gets another go. He Game gets another chance. And he doesn't Robert need a second Thornton. opportunity as he berates himself there as a the double five goes in. First hold of throw. Fifth leg, it's Gary to throw first. Game on. That Isle of Man. Martin Turner, the 60. big winner there, winning the £5,000. He don't fancy a, a crack at Taylor. 100. I think there's a whole heap of players. You look you look at that, Joel. I'm, I'm so interested to see when the final entries come in and you just see the names that go into it. It's It's... That's going to be as tough as any event to, 100. to win. That that would be worth the title. Forget about the fact of playing Taylor on the stage in Blackpool, which of course is an honour. But to win a title of that magnitude against that kind of field would be honour in itself, let alone the prize that will be dangled at the end of it. And if you will get a more sheet soon, that would be interesting to see who has entered their name down in the freight. We know of some of the names that are going to be playing in that particular qualifier, and the names are huge. And Robert Thornton is one of the players they'll be hoping they'll have a crack at later on in the tournament, should they get past the power. So he leaves himself on 81 after nine to get this job done in double quick time to move him on 81. to eight points Robert, and at the top of the table. 81. Another possibility. An 11 darter. Oh, he's going to go ball. Oh, Falsy five. Well, left double 18. Yeah, Gary we'll, we'll call Robert Thornton. We'll be playing Richie House and money in round one, a repeat of the final of the Worlds this year. Oh, another one of those. Oh, my goodness. Tops. 140. That was almost the perfect Robert, Hail Mary 36. shot. 36. But Robert is a fall in Gary's match. side Robert as he opens Thornton. up the day with a 4-1 victory, and it puts him to the top of the group on points. Eight points plus six on the next difference. He gets the better of Stafford and arrests the performance from yesterday with some conviction, that is for sure. Thornton, a 4-1 winner then against Stafford in our second game of the day. We're going to take a short break. When we return, it's our ADC qualifier for the week, John Nelson in action. He takes on Sam Kankit next.
Welcome back to the Modus Super Series where we've seen the first couple of matches go 4-1 both ways. The last one, Robert Thornton getting his revenge on Gary Stafford yesterday. A 4-1 win for the Thorn. Uh, he pulls clear at the top of the table, actually. We'll take a look at the Group A table now. Thornton, the first player to eight points. Stafford just losing out a little bit after that win yesterday against Thornton. It could, we could have seen all the players on six, but Stafford's defeat there means that won't happen. John Nelson, though, looking to get to six if he can beat Sam Kankit here. The Welshman looking to join Robert Thornton at the top of the table if he can get the win. He did hit a lot of 180s yesterday, as predicted by Chris Mason, and they'll be looking to get off to a flying start today. So it is the Welshman Kankit against the ADC qualifier, Nelson, and Mason Henry are on hand to talk you through it. Yeah, thank you very much, Chris. What are we going to see from John Nelson today? Because what we saw on day one was a player that when he came up against those at the top end of the table, well, that was where he got his two results from. <laughs> Obviously, there was something about the big games and that pressure, that big game environment that he seemed to like and enjoy. And I just wonder now, he's had that day in to settle to what is a brand new atmosphere underneath the lights, underneath the stage and, and everything else. Now, we may see a more settled and relaxed version of John. And Sam. Um, but yeah, John was on debut yesterday, so it's all a, a bit of a learning curve. But his best performance of the day yesterday came against... Sam Kankett, he averaged 87.32, 1-4-1, 1, 50% on the doubles, 1-1-80, one, one, high finish of 88. Tidy, tidy performance. First leg, it's John to throw first. Game the on. Odds compilers are not convinced he's going to repeat that. There you go, 6-5. John Nelson, 8-13, Sam 59. Kankett. 59. But a chance for Sam to join. Thornton at the top of the table on eight. If you married up the five performances 100. together, would you say Sam Kanky was the most consistent player over the course of the whole lot? Yeah, yeah, you'd have to say that. I mean, his outstanding performance came in 100. the match against Lee Cox, match number 11 yesterday. And that shows me that, you know, he he has the ability to, to maintain even at the end of the session. 78. I mean, he started tidily enough yesterday. He beat Gary Stafford 4-1 with a, an 85 average, a 1-2-2 finish. One hundred. a few doubles, missed nine darts at a double, so that 85 average is a, a little deceiving. And then, of course, he had that big win over Richie Harrison, 99. which would have filled him with a, a lot of confidence, especially the way Richie has been playing of late. 100. Well, he was the maximum man yesterday. One and he finds his first of the day in his opening John, leg of the day. 142. He had four in his game against Lee Cox yesterday. Yeah, I was looking back over some stats 92. I could find in the... Sam, you require 44. Varying tournaments that Sam enters where we get a... We get Game that data. The first leg. It was something Sam that it. stood out to me was the amount of 180s he hits. Second leg, it's Sam That's to throw first. Dart break Game throw. on. He had seven over the course of yesterday. Four in that game against Lee Cox. That put well. That probably 41. was the game of the day, wasn't it? Six maximums in that match. Can't get an average just under 101. Well, that wasn't the biggest average in terms of performance in terms of two players going at it against each other. That was probably the best game we saw. Yeah, absolutely. He was he was brilliant. Well, he won them. He won he won that game yesterday, Sam, against Lee with 100. a ten darter, didn't he? That's the way to wrap it up. Don't know of anybody else who's done <laughs> that here. One hundred. Of course, we're celebrating our two-year anniversary. Of being on Sporty Stuff TV this week, and we are 96. going back over our memories. I didn't pick that one actually as one of my memories. I was forced into picking one of my own. I hasten to add, but mine was the the one three two. Ninety eight. 
only because me and Conan had been literally discussing it that afternoon while we were having a, a bit of a practice. And of course, it came against Conan. Much to our amusement. He got his revenge, though. Yeah, he won a little bit of money, didn't he, later on that night? Yeah. 40. Sam, you require 124. Put it past him. It's a bit awkward. Could go ball. 56. To 36. John, you require 170. Another. A bit of nice showbiz shot for Nelson, but can get then to double his lead to back the break up with a hold in the second. It's going to be two darts at double four. Yeah, he only needs the, the one. Leg. He's playing Some like a dream it. at the minute. This is a brilliant start to the day. Yeah, yeah, to miss a double. Two from two. Third leg, it's John to throw 31 first. 31 darts to complete the opening two legs, an average of 96-97. Nelson with a scoring average at the moment of 88. 59. Not had a dart at a double. Fifty-nine. It's interesting when you watch some of the early streams compared to what it's like now, the, the the true evolution of it. Yeah, absolutely. When you, I mean, we were we were chuffed a bit, and so were the players 60. when we opened up Southampton amidst amidst the sort of well, it was the it was the lockdown, wasn't it? One hundred. To think we were the. At times during this evolution, we were the only people doing live sport. And now the venue we have, absolutely 60. incredible. I'm not saying Jared Cole had the most famous conservatory in the world, but I think there was the Alligator Conservatory Company wanted to do an advert in there. Well, we had that particularly hot summer, didn't we? And it was 40. absolutely baking. I'm trying to think who the other player, who was the player playing in the garage, was it? One Scott Walters, was it? It was fifty-eight, um, and you could see him and Jared, and the sweat was literally just pouring off them. Who was it who played outside the apartment? And all you could hear was the motorbikes going. Jose, apart. Joe, yeah, it's Jose Justicia. Yeah, the little, the little scooters whizzing past. Forty-four. So you require one hundred and two. Little mopeds. Closest we get to a crowd at any sport at the time. Thank you. We have a size ball lead here in the third. He's looking to lay up now. 78. And that's some way to do so. Leaving himself double 12 after 15. It's another steady leg. Yeah, he's maintaining that 96 plus average. 140. Sam, you require 24. For 3 0. Nice guide. And after double six, Nelson poised on 80. This doesn't go. The third lay. Sam Kanker. That's the double break and a 3 0 lead. Three out of five on the doubles. Fourth leg, it's Sam to throw on first. 180. Game on. Four tons. Fifty-seven. So huge as well in terms of the legs difference because if he does wrap it up four nil, we'll go on to eight points plus seven and top the table. We will leapfrog. Eighty-three. Richie Housen and Robert Thornton. And perhaps more importantly for John Nelson, it'll move on to minus seven in terms of the legs difference bracket and already being cut adrift. That's almost 81. like a second sucker punch to you. Well, this is where. It Gary Stafford has a problem. He's he's on minus nine, so that equates to two four nils, and you're still not you're still going to be thirty eight minus one. We'll see Gary Stafford a little bit later on. He's having his little bit of a break for the day before he takes on John Nelson. That's in game six. Next up, it'll be Thornton against Housen. The winner of this Group A, which is completed tomorrow. Straight into Saturday night's final. Second and third go into Group B, which is 81. Thursday and Friday night, which is a field of five. The top three qualify it from that. Four, five, and six come back for the Red Eye Group C, Thursday and Friday morning, when they're joined by a, a further three players. It's only the top two 
qualify it from that. And that gives us our, our six-player field Saturday night, which is split into two 44. groups of three. Sam, you require 126. Make up our semi-finals. Winner taking away £5,000 and a place in Champions Week. Where they will be battling it out for a first prize of £20,000. I never, ever thought that would happen. Amazing to think. I thought this would have. I thought it had legs. Ninety-five. Sam, you required thirty-two. End up on a, End up on TV and now playing for a near on a million pounds a year. Incredible no score. effort by everybody John, involved. John, you require one hundred and sixty, including the players. Already into Champions Week, John Worsley, Owen Bates, Yella Klassen, Samuel Taylor, Kai, 32. Mike Warburton. Game shot. And Kanker will be looking match. to join the mix. So and he looks in very good stead as he gets the bet to John Nelson by four legs to nil in his opening game of the day. That ends the first round of fixtures here at the Super Series. Kanker's a 4 0 winner. He's top of the table alongside Thornton on eight. But we're going to see after this short break take on Richie Houghton. If Houghton wins, we have a three way tie at the top again. Welcome back. And so far on this Tuesday morning, it's been three pretty one-sided affairs, as we saw there from Sam Kankett before the break. We'll take a look at the figures from his game. A 4-0 win against the ADC qualifier, John Nelson, who wasn't allowed a dart double in the entirety of that contest. Sam, Sam Kankett, four out of nine, uh, three one four two. another trademark maximum as well for him. And that means that the margin of that victory sees him climb up the league table and he sits in first place, at least temporarily, because Robert Thornton is back in action next. He plays currently third place, Richie House, and in a, a really important battle, a match that could well be the match of the day. Lee Cox also on six, Nelson and Stafford both with two wins apiece. Those victories coming 
yesterday. Uh, but we have been talking about this week the fact that it is our two-year anniversary of this event. And we've got an England-Scotland match coming up. We're just going to take a moment now to just go a little bit deeper into how far and wide this game has reached, this tournament has reached, and look at all of the players around the world. If you've ever wondered about how many nations have competed here in the Super Series, well, have a look at that. 25 nations over the last two years, a total of 236 players. Obviously, England, the majority, but we've had players from India, Russia, Greece, Sweden, Latvia, Brazil, Canada. Have a look at that, see if you can get your notepad out, maybe hit pause if you're watching on YouTube or a TV that's got that capability. And uh, note down some of those players from those countries that maybe only have one or two. I don't expect you to get all the English ones, but really, this tournament has come such a long way from, as Mace was actually saying during the previous match, that we just had fairly local players from the Southampton, the Hampshire area, to have stretched around the world like that. And if you are a player who's of capable uh, talent, then do look at the ADC website. You can qualify for this event, just like John Nelson did by winning through one of their tournaments. Uh, but back to today's action. The next match, as I mentioned, is between Robert Thornton and Richie Howson. Uh, the pair, of course, no strangers to one another, having met in the World Seniors final just last month. Robert Thornton came out on top on that occasion, and he also came out on top when the pair met here yesterday. Thornton winning that one 4-2. Both players winning their opening matches today 4-1. So off to a flyer this morning, and now they can get game two for them underway. If Thornton wins, he's back to the top of the table. If Housen wins, he pulls level with the Thorn. Back to Mason Henry. Thanks, Murph. And, well, that was very, very interesting to see. 236 different players and the amount of different nationalities. All credit to those behind the scenes. You only usually hear from those in front of the camera and behind the microphone, but a sterling effort by everybody involved, especially considering the logistical nightmares we've had over the last few years uh, congratulations to all players that have played their part and thank you on behalf of everybody here at the super series for your participation yeah we we're playing a little game in that little link of which players were from each nation we're not going to say who's from who and who we think's where so we don't spoil that's the illusion for you lot to that's one for, one for on. the darts quiz night mm. Better than the karaoke Christmas party, that's for sure. <laughs> I don't possibly know what you're on about. AC3. Neither do I. I can't remember a, a bit of it. Well, apart from your singing, of course, which well, I think I got PTSD as a result. 100. Well, your husband's got a few bad memories from. Their meeting, I'm sure, at the World Six. Seniors, although incredible to reach that final. Just a step too far on that occasion. And these two met yesterday, and it was another win for the Thorn, who's a thorn in Richie Housen's side right now. 60. On that tie, 4 2, with an average of over 90. 4 out of 9 on the doubles, a high finish of 1 1 6. But both players 125. looking in very good nick so far as we start the second cycle of matches. Richie Housen winning his opening game 4-1 with a 92-26. Thornton also winning 4-1 against Gary Stafford with a 88-46. Similar doubling. Both had a ton plus finish. <clears throat> Although Thornton's was spectacular, wasn't it? A bit like that, Max. Well, we saw the table, didn't we, before this one got underway. And it is a hugely, hugely significant one because if Hauser could pick up the points, we'll have three players tied on eight points. Then it would be very much advantage Sam Kanka, who takes on 53. Lee Cox next. The Fortune on the first wants to be in a league Robert of his own at the top, and he opens up with a 14 data. Well, we did suggest at the top of the show. Second leg, it's Richie to throw first. We may Game see on. the top four gap the bottom two. And then the top two maybe.
gap positions three and four. 140. One hundred. Good start to the leg. Let me know. She has great mentality. One hundred and forty. Throw all of his own as well, doesn't he? Certainly not textbook, but it works. And so does this. One hundred and eighty. Significant. Because it draws them level. Two, two, one apiece. This one is warming up beautifully. One hundred and eighty. Beautiful shot. Of a beautiful shot. Kudos to our director. Someone took the cook on because this one Richie is on flames. 41. Housen here wanting forty-one for an eleven data in answer to Thornton's 14 in the previous leg. Nine. Well, he's thrown 12 darts, and he may Robert just lose Rikaya, the leg. 86. Opportunity for an 11 of his own. 54 for 32. 74 left. Trouble 14 for double 16. Ooh. 46. Well, Richie Rikaya, 32. Tops out 32. the 12 and not get, get, a, get a go. Have a bit of double trouble yesterday. Twenty-four. Robert, you That's require five. forty. Game and he's not going to come leg. back for any more. Fulton doubles his lead. Back to back, fourteen darters, averaging one hundred and seven point three six. Third leg, it's Robert to throw first. Game on. Fulton has a personal best of around one hundred and nine and change. I'm not saying this game is good, 85. but Fulton won that in 14 darts, and there was a plethora of missed doubles. Oh, as the troubles are concerned, there hasn't been many misses, has there? 140. Again, he wasn't showing his mental fortitude. There's nothing more annoying. 81. When you just trying to put a player away, and he just won't go away. We hit four 140s, and we're in the middle of the third leg. Under Max. 100. The biggest shock was he only found one treble. Thornton, you had to hit a 140. There 140. And the way that first starts pitch just below, well, I was going to say that looked like a nice guy to invite its way into the 81. treble, but it did in the end. Just a bit of news from the ADC Vault series in Somerset. Last night, Ricky Harding. 90. Won last night. He beat Sam Ward in the final with 107.36. His second, 107.36 of the night. Hit one in, a, in the quarterfinals, semi finalist Tom Lonsdale, and then. Mike Norton, 140. Who not Robert, too you long ago. 105. Tops. 65. Below par Richie leg. He's now thrown 15 40. darts. <laughs> well, he's for a 13. Game well, shot maybe the third leg. Richie. Richie House. Should start leaving tops instead of 32. That's a 13 dart break. Winning leg so Fourth far. Leg. It's in Richie's this match. to throw first. Back-to-back back 14s, legs 1 and 2 for Robert Thornton and a 13 data in leg 3 for Richie Housen. And it equates to these averages. 100. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. Proper darts. 134. The average now ticks above 104 in the case of Thornton. I'll tell you what, if they play like this in the Champion of Champions match that they've got coming up at the end of March, then we are in for an absolute corker.
Yeah, 25th, 26th of March. Tickets available via the Blackpool. We know seven, of course, of the the eight players lining up. Trina Gulliver, Martin Adams, Phil Taylor, who will play the golden ticket winner, which is taking place on the 24th. If you're 81. 50 and over and you want to take part, head over to the World Seniors Darts Tour website. Thornton, of course, playing Housen. And the 91. current Masters champion, David Cameron in action as well. It's Kevin Painter. And to play each other, don't they? Cameron yeah. against Painter, Gulliver against Adams. These two, and then Taylor against that 59. golden ticket winner. Well, you require 136. So, tickets available for that from vivablackboard.com or dartshop.tv. 42. Get your tickets. It's the Saturday and Sunday afternoon. And if you can't make it, it's on Channel 5, Terrestrial Television, for the... World Seniors. There's also 100. two ranking events as well taking place over the course of that weekend in Blackpool. So a very important weekend. For more than one reason as Thornton now stares down 54. top to a 3-1 lead. And so Halston returns Would you require 80? for the 80 for a level game. He had joy on tops in the previous leg. And it's only going to be one dart at it that he's going to get. Top of the board. 60. Drag just below. Robert, you require 40. On that for a level game. Game shot Thornton the fourth doesn't leg. Miss. Robert Thornton. 16 darter, the longest leg of the match. Yeah, I'm sadly fifth leg. It's unavailable to, to attend, first. so I'm giving game everybody on. a bit of a chance there. <laughs> Is that because me and you are stuck together in the commentary box? We are. He's stuck together on the lipstick. His third max of the match. The fourth in total. I think it's going to be very easy for our social media admins 100. to pick game of the day today. <laughs> oh, hello, Robert. Ooh, we just forced that. 131. That one oh, Robert. And after the Champions of Champions, of course, 24th, 25th of June at the Westlands 91. Entertainment Venue in Yeovil. It is the World Masters, 16 players. Line up so far for that. Mark Dubridge, Bob Anderson, former World Master, of course. Robert Thornton, a former World Master. Martin Adams, a former World Master. Phil Taylor, a former World Master. 60. David Cameron, Robert, you're David Cameron the 90. current champion. Myself, Trina Gulliver, John Park, Kevin Painter. Tops. Ooh, 50. That would have been to wrap it up with a, a 12 and a 105 average if that top's gone in. Just going to have to settle for 13, possibly. 42. Robert, you're well, This really 40. has been a statement performance laid down to the rest of the field. Twenty, but it is not done yet. Had that gone in one, he would have used just fifty-seven darts to win four legs. One hundred and forty, Robert. You require twenty. House and a prize, a pleasure. Game but it is Thornton who picks the up the points. Who moves Thornton. on to double digits at the top of Group A. And it is the pawn who steals the lead at the top of the table, deposing of Richie Houghton once again. And what an encounter we have just witnessed. A 98.6 average for Thornton, a 93 for Houghton. That average was above the tongue mark for both players for large swathes of that match. But it is Thornton who is the victor by four legs to one. And coming up after the break, Sam Kankit looking to join Thornton on double figures as he takes on Lee Cox after this short break.
Welcome back to the Modus Super Series, where we're celebrating our two-year anniversary of this tournament. Uh, and one of the things that Chris Mason mentioned in commentary, it's not just the players, not just the people in front of the camera that make it all work, but everybody behind the scenes as well. So we're going to take a few minutes now to get to know the production team here at the Super Series. Most intelligent. Um, I'd probably have to say the most intelligent is Kirk Bevins from a book smart point of view. I don't know about you, Matt. Well, I can't debate that one. It's got to be Kirk Bevins. Most intelligent would have to be Kirk Bevins. You're not countdown champion for nothing. You're going to have to go with Kirk Bevins with his countdown history and his quizzing. Most intelligent. Uh, George Noble, is that what you want me to say, George? I'm going to pro I'll probably have to say me, really. Paul Hinks. I've never seen a man get around a puzzle like that before. I reckon a lot of people are going to say you. I'd have to say Paul Nichols. He's got quite a depth of knowledge, hasn't he? Uh, it's got to be Paul Starr. Probably Paul Nicholson. There's nothing he doesn't know about vegan diets and meditation. Abby? Definitely Abby. She's got some cracking dresses. I'd have to go with either Abby uh, Davis or Chris Mason. I think it's a bit of a toss-up for me. I'd say Chris Murphy also always comes in as some smart clobber, doesn't he? Paul Nicholson's very smart. He wears some nice clobber. Gotta be me, really. Uh, find any Tunks and Time t-shirt in any of your local charity shops. I will go for Charlie Corstantine as the best dressed. Paul or Abby? Abby, some fantastic outfits Abby wears, so uh, I'm going to say Paul and Abby. Best dressed would probably have to be Abigail Davis, one of our presenters. Best dressed. Okay, Bevins. Worst dress, I'm going to have to go manky. Uh, looks like he slept in his car all night when he comes in in the morning. Owen Binks. Kirk Bevins with his Slazinger and Puma fleeces. Best mate would have to be Paul Hinks, basically because he's like a second granddad to me. Henry, Hugh, Kirk, Taylor. Everybody's a mate. I love them all. For me, it's either Chris Murphy or Chris Mason. I, I work a lot with them. And... It's going to have to be Owen. Best mate. Won three gold cups back to back. Oh, we're not talking about the horses, are we? Paul, uh, we all a bit of a romance thing going on. Uh, best mate. Oh, I like Stefan. He's uh, my pal. Also, Owen Binks, um, mainly because he took me to watch Coldplay. I'll pass. <laughs> Biggest joker, Paul Star, the funniest man I've ever met. Get out of my pub! Paul Star. Paul Star, final answer. It's got to be Paul Star, tungsten time. They're all clowns, really. I'm just say me, really. Yeah, yeah, again, yeah, me, yeah. Biggest joker, Paul Star. Paul Star. The comms turn him off all the time. So it's the way, it's the way you tell him. Biggest minor, it's got to be Owen Binks. It doesn't take much at all. Owen Binks. There's only one name comes to mind, George Noble. It's definitely not George. It's definitely not George. Biggest Mona is, it's going to have to be Kirk Bevins again. Four bacon baps and four donuts for breakfast. It's Stefan Everard. Stefan Everard. Uh, there's only one man. His name is Stefan Everard, and no disrespect to the young man. I can remember when the studio was in Southampton. It was carbonara, baguettes for breakfast. And I'm not talking about the mini baguettes, I'm talking proper inches. Stefan, the man is a machine. Again, he's got to be Kirk. He listens to Venger Boys, Steps. Owen Binks and Coldplay, I mean. Why pick that when you just pick Scooter? Yeah, Owen Binks, Coldplay. <laughs> uh, well, of course, that's Owen. I mean, the whole world agrees, apart from uh, Chris Martin from Coldplay. Have I got a catchphrase, did you say? Um, yes, and if you watch it. Did you say catchphrase? The Tunks and Time calls a worst taste in music. Uh, the Everard brothers need to have a word with themselves. Scooter, really. Well, we've got two sisters who... Um, who work uh, behind the scenes, Stefan and Billy, and to be honest, Scooter. I mean, what on earth is that all about? Best singer, it's gotta be me, hasn't it? The only one to know who sings is Henry. Henry Deacon can, can bail out some bangers. Charlie calls the theme. Charlie's quick step is a thing of beauty. I don't know Charlie could dance. He can't. Best singer, Henry Deacon, best dancer, would have to be me. Charles answering for it. It is Kirk. No, it's not Kirk. Come on. Definitely Henry Deacon. Uh, after meeting everyone, handy in a fight, I've got to go for Corrine Hammond. Oh, mace. 
If I need someone to back me up in a corner, it's got to be Mace. Owen would be dead handy in a fight because they can all pile on him while I run away. Do you know, I'd probably back myself against most people on the Super Series. Handy in a fight would have to be Mark Smith, our player's marshal. I'd want Mark Smith or Chris Mason on my side. Chris Mason. Chris Mason. You done? Excellent. Thank you. feel like you know us all now, don't you? And I can confirm that Henry Deacon as best singer is an ironic answer. Like his ironic song choice on karaoke, let me entertain you. It doesn't quite work, really, because that's not what he does. But the players are about to entertain us here. Sam Kankett and Lee Cox, and they did yesterday. They were 6-1-80s in this tie. Four of them going the way of Kankett, who won it 4-2 with an average north of 100. So let's get the action back underway. Just talking, not singing. Over to Henry. Well... Thanks, Murph. I'll, I'll let Henry chip in in a minute. I, I'm, I'm actually glad we found out it was Let Me Entertain You because I didn't have a clue that <laughs> that's, that's what it was. Wow. Well, I think Robbie Williams did it just a little bit better. That's debatable. What's not debatable is the form of Robert Thornton so far today. Two from two. An emphatic against... Richie House, and in the last one, a really, really beautiful performance. 14, 14, 16, and 16, three one eighties. Good finishing, good scoring. Well, I'll follow that one, lads. And they go four to six, Lee Cox, Sam Kankit, 11 to 10, and both me and you. First leg, like it's Lee to throw first. The way Sam's Game playing, on. as we've mentioned, over the course of the four games, he's been the most consistent performer. You actually look at the average in 88.41. The success against Nelson. Meanwhile, for Cox, it was a 74.35 against Richie Housen in their opening encounter. So, a 14 point swing in the averages between the pair. And it's Kankit who goes off the 11 to 10 outsider. 100. Yeah, and he tends to be a bit of a slow starter. Yesterday, started with an 81 86. Back that up with a 77. And then started to go through the gears. Although, so back to back 140s here is a much better start to proceedings than what we've seen from him so 55. far today. 55. He lost his opening match, as you said. 74-35, averaging... 180! Uh, one. This is some start from Lee Cox, and this is the kind of darts he produced yesterday when he had that towering 82. average of 101. Tops. Game what shot on the first for Lee Cox. Lee Cox. An 11 data to begin. And we saw yesterday at times. Second leg, it's Sam to throw incredible first. Incredible level of Game performance on. from Cox. He had the highest average of yesterday. Highest average still of the week so far. That 103.66 against John Nelson. 55. It was actually in this battle yesterday where Kankit got his highest average of the day. 100.99, it was a 4-1 win for the Welshman, but goodness gracious me, Lee Cox has, well, he's come out like a greyhound out the traps, hasn't he? At the 55. Blocks quicker than Colin Jackson. Average, 145.93. After a leg and a bit. That's 55. A, an indication of the start to the match. You, you probably wouldn't know Colin. One hundred. I'd know him more for his punditry than I would his actual athletics career. A bit like Michael Johnson. So. I know him as a great summarizer, but I wouldn't know him as much as a the great athlete of his day. Two of the greatest in track and field. Fifty-eight. In the pomp of athletics, wasn't it? 97. In the 80s and 90s. Certainly the golden era for me. A bit like boxing, really. 60. 70s, Lee requires 72. 20 and tops. To back the 11 up with a 15. 52. Come on. 
of these players is get the stage running. Got this man so far. 95. Lee Cox required 20. In blistering. Game shot on the second leg. Lee Cox. 16 dart break a throw in leg two. 180s in each of the third leg. It's Lee to throw two first. Legs, two Game out of three on. on the doubles. An average of 111.33. It's tumbled. 44. Yeah, he's regretting, isn't he? It's only 104.6 now. 100. We heard the 11 to 10 on Sam Kankett, and I was thinking it's good odds, and he took it personally. <laughs> well, we can only go by the numbers. 180. And a different start. To two matches yesterday and a slow start today, but 39. He's got it right here. Robin Hood. Ninety-nine. Not a shoulder at the moment. Twenty-six. Sam Kankit. I don't know that's if that's down to the Pressure that Lee is putting him under. He's making him force everything. 58. Well, this is way below anything we've seen from San Kankit yeah. so far this week. Proper commentators curse this. 60. Lee, you require 120. Up the ladder we go. Top rung. Game shot oh, the third beautiful. That's a 15 Lee dart Cox. to have a look at that. The average 107.36. Well, he, he, he broke his personal best yesterday, Full which was Sam to throw just first. over 101. On. With the 103.66, he could produce another PB today. 14 dart should do it. 99. Yeah. Maybe even a 15. If it carries on doing that trend at some over the course 95. of the week, then we might be threatening Jason Askew territory. Incredibly, that record was set in the opening week, wasn't it? So we could say pretty much exactly two years ago. One hundred and forty. Yeah, this is special. Sixty. Forty-three. Maybe. Should have started on the nineteens there. Two six six. One hundred and forty. You got a bit excited there, do you think? Yeah. I'll oh, be fully aware of. You are as a player, you know, when you're around. Sort 57. Of Sam, you require territory. 107. You sometimes just take your eye off the ball and he's left himself a, a bogey. Here's the comeback on. 75. Backs. Pave the way for get backs. I'm not saying Lee Cox has played well and had a couple of interesting visits, but in the space of two visits to the board, his average has dropped by six points. 100. Sam, you require 32. 20, which would have left for 13. Oh, dear. Game oh. shot on the fourth leg. Oh, Sam Kanker. It. It's a hold. And he gets his first chalk on the board. And if you are going to be Fifth leg, it's lead to throw first. Game on. Don't get done 4 now because you may well regret that on Wednesday afternoon. And the leg difference, which it 45. tends to do, plays such a huge part. How many times have we seen players not make Group B or 59. even win Group A because of a one poor performance and a couple of missed doubles? This week, more than ever, you want Group B. Yeah. 100. That Group C is... That's a joke. 
you know, that is a, a group of death. 100. One hundred and forty. Like Champions Week. Who's who? One hundred and forty. see the overhead angle of the dark of the board. Great work from our directors. Do an excellent job picking all the right angles, clicking all the right buttons. One hundred. Pushing our buttons every now and then. Well, Cox has been pushing Sam Kankert's buttons from start 59. to finish here. Lee, you require 160. If he needs them, wrap it up. Ball one, and he's going to need another visit, that's for sure. 51 remaining. 76. Choose his tops. If he'd have taken out the Mormon six, he would have finished with one hundred. Lee, you require forty. Group A campaign. Game as it shot is, and the match. Lee he Cox ends with a sixteen darter, winning legs there for Lee Cox. 11, 16, 15 and sixteen, an average of a hundred point two three, a high out of one twenty. Four out of five on the doubles. He did produce a four out of four yesterday. He takes the two points. Lee Cox joins Sam Kankit on eight points. Big game coming up next for these two. Gary Stafford takes on John Nelson. This is the Modus Super Series. One hundred and eighty.
will indeed be live all week here at the Modus Super Series, our second anniversary being celebrated throughout this week. We'll have some memorable moments for you and we'll create some more this week, I'm sure. We'd love to have you here on Saturday night as well. Tickets available for free. All you have to do is go to dartshop.tv to book yours and you could be here in Portsmouth on Saturday to see who lifts the title. Next up in Group A, it's a meeting between the two players currently in the bottom two spots in the group, Gary Stafford and John Nelson going head to head, both on four points. One of them can make a move, though, of a victory here. When the pair met yesterday, it did go the way of Stafford. Went the distance to match 4 3. That is something we haven't seen today. No losing player has got more than a single leg so far. Will that change here? We're about to find out in the company of Chris Mason and Henry Deacon. Yeah, thank you very much, Chris. And we get the expectation that perhaps this one has legs to it. You look at the statistics and the way they played this week, this just has the feel of an encounter that's possibly got all seven legs written all over it here. This is the final game of the second round of matches here at the Super Series on the second day's worth of action. And as far as the bookmakers have it, John Nelson goes off a... Heavy 8-15 to 15 favour, Gary Stafford at 11-8, to 8, but me and Mace were delving through the 180s markets, and you had a very interesting selection in there. Yeah. First leg, it's gets Gary, Gary to throw Stafford first. Game on. To have one or more 180, 11-10, to 10, and this has got the feeling that it could go all seven legs. It did yesterday. 125. And Gary did produce one 180. He's had two in his opening match today. 58. I think that may be worth a, a little look at. He'll be like back in Constitution Hill at the 330. Well, I was having a look at you. 134. Mm. Big favourite. I like that one. Sixty-one. Does that mean we can use falling at the final hurdle and all the rest of those kind of puns 40. in the next few days? Absolutely. Oh, if you don't, I'll be disappointed. We well, made a change from the 18th hole at Augusta. One hundred. And blue touch paper and all the rest of them. You can mark out the bingo card now. I might as well just say them all. 60. 96. Gary, you require 142. Uh, first to finish here in this opening leg. Fifty. You actually pulled me up the this morning early one, asked me about why I was singing about double ten yesterday. Eighty five. Found the Gary, you side of it. Ninety two. We well, actually was asked who was that singing when he said, Well it definitely wasn't Mace, was it? Fifty-six. Double eighteen there, which leaves him on double eighteen in the end after two singles. John Nelson one oh one for an opening leg break of throw. I guarantee he went the bullseye route there. Thirty-four. He's made a bit of a Gary mess of it. Thirty-six. Yep. Opportunity. He have passed him by. Game shot on the first leg. Gary two. Stafford. Gary Stafford was. The 11 to 8 shot, wasn't he, for this one? Second leg, it's John to throw first. Game on. 59. It's an important one for the pair just to get something going. We saw glimmers from Stafford in that game against Thornton. Average of 80 and a half, couple 81. of maximums. One out of five. On the outer ring. Just think he's still waiting to piece that jigsaw together. Forty-six. 
41. This one is more about bragging rights. <clears throat> I mean, mathematically, obviously, possible that either player... 79. ...win Group A, but I think it's unlikely with the... Well, it's just the difference in the numbers between the bottom two and the rest of the field right now. 80. The beauty for these two is, no matter what happens, and, of course, all five players that don't win this group is the... 41. ...reset and go again Thursday and Friday. That's the beauty of coming in into Group A. I say that from 99. personal experience. How did you get on in Group C? Well, the Thursday was better than the Friday. Well, four out of four on the... 92. Uh, five out of five oh, on, yeah. the, on the Thursday. And then that horrible scenario where it's just, look, just you've probably done enough already, but it's just, you just need the one win in your life. 180. The worst thing to say to a John, you require player. 170. Just, just get, that, get that one win. It's like winning. It's like the winning line. It's just getting over it. You're very selfish because you then had to try and draft in a commentator, but not just a 82. Saturday night, but for the Champions Week. You had the pleasure of Wolfie for a couple of days in the box. Yeah. 57. John, you require 36. Level things up. This is a 20 dart hold from Gary. Game it's shot a 19 the second dart hold. John Nelson. From John. So it should be an 18 dart hold from Gary. Symmetry. Third leg, it's Gary to throw first. Game on. I love the bit of put-up placement 80. Gary Stafford's got on the table. Have a look at that. He's got the towel with his sponsor on it, and he's deliberately emblazoned it right on there. Good bit of a PR thinking. There we are. I think we, I'm sure we've broken probably some put up placement laws there, but. I think I use them for a while, the fit flights. They're very good. 59. Very expensive, but very good. Yeah, nothing wrong with a bit of product placement. That's what it's all about. 60. There's so much from, from bike boxers who moan about this whole YouTube boxing thing, but it's the way they market themselves. It's the. And that's what you've got to do. I'll get with the times, I'm afraid. That golfers with watches. What do you think after every single round they put a watch on and they they scratch their head to get their Takoya or their Rolex 93. in frame? Same reason they take on and off the cap because it becomes noticeable who your sponsor is. And they've been doing that for years. 21. I remember in very nearly myself and Chamber just nearly 140 Irish Masters. My luck, it was a Hyundai instead of a Ferrari. <laughs> I'll be honest, that would I, be I'm back, I'm back then. They 42. were 42. John, you require 68. Cars now, amazing cars. I'll be honest, it'd be quite hard to put up placement of a car. Put this right, I think you'll get away with it. 36. Get one in here. Not what? in the comms box. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a, a matchbox one. A bit like your car. <laughs> you leave Marco 134. alone. John, you require 32. A pony, mate. Mm. This is a very nice little car as well. Ooh, that was tight, wasn't it? 16. Gary, you require 119. Gary. Take this out. It's got to be trouble 19. Trouble 20 and tops. Such a hard 99. Adjustment. John, you require 16. Game shot on the third leg. It is breaking John through Nelson. to John Nelson. In the space of seven visits there. Oh, it'll matter for him. He's got it on the Full board. Leg. He it's leads 2-1. He's halfway on. towards the victory post. Yeah, everything is 
Seven visits so far from both. And that's the, the difference in quality we were talking about. It's two players who playing perhaps devoid of a little bit of confidence. I think maybe 42. there's a desperateness from both players knowing the significance of this game and wanting to win and maybe trying too hard. Maybe at times as well, playing a bit defensively as well. 82. Yeah, totally agree. They're scared of losing. Twenty-four. Did you manage 40. to get on your bike ride yesterday? Did mate, yeah. Enjoying my well. It's, there's a lot of traffic about. So 134. Scary. Just lucky uh, Owen Binks isn't here, otherwise you probably got run over. Yeah, exactly. 59. Oh, Gary Stafford here needs a, needs a two-trouble visit, ideally. There's one of them. 85. Follow it. Just reaching in. 60. Uh, 180. They would be perfect. Would have left 36. 100. John, you require 164. It's perfect for him. Unable to follow. 56. Like Gary, you require 116. 108. Single 19. Leaves tops. Game and shot he on the fourth leg. Gary Stafford. With a 1 1 6 out. The best leg of the match so far. 18 dart. Fifth leg. It's Gary to throw first. Game two. two. More ducks than Tyson Fury. <laughs> Here we go. Here's a little bit of darting nostalgia for a bit of on this day stuff back in 1980. Eric Bristow, Gary Morgan, 4 3 at the Golden Dart Tournament Final in London. 123. Harry Morgan, Welsh legend. The player with a very unusual action. But he could play. 140. Yeah, a ton of one he is, did Kerry. 49. Much Eric would have loved the World Seniors. Oh, he'd have been all over it. One hundred and forty. Forty-three. This is a much improved leg here from Gary Stafford. It looks as if he's the one who is. Just going through the gears a little bit. 140 there, leaves himself on double 19 after 12, although he may get the luxury of splitting it. Well, I say that. Here comes John Nelson back in response. Gary required 38. Going straight for it. Now he should split. Game shot on the fifth leg. <laughs> Gary Stafford. Honestly, should have split. So that is a 14 dart hold to back up the break back in leg four. Sixth leg, it's John to throw first. How can it feel so be so right? Well, with John 100. back on one full seven, it looked to us, and of course he's he sees a, a completely different angle than we can see from our shot. 45. Well, I don't mind, it, don't mind the attack as long as it goes in dart one. 
Problem is, 125. if you shy away from it slightly, then attack with your final dart, it goes inside. You've then got a burner dart, and then all sorts of uh, pressure is involved. Here we go. Here's the 11th attempt. 180. Well, at least you're winning people money as opposed to spending five. about five million pounds a go. We haven't spent any money yet, Mace. There's still plenty of time. Oh, yeah. We'll get through a few million by the end of the week. 62. Uh, time you've spent here, that's going to be close to your, your invoice. <laughs> <laughs> Don't feel the tax, man, will you? Fifty-seven, John. You require one hundred and thirty-four. They suggested this had uh, potentially seven legs in it. Fifty-four. Well, John Nelson. Gary, will be you require one hundred and fifty-seven to make that prediction true. I can Stafford wrap it up with a one-five-seven. He's had ten plus out already. But that's not going to happen now. Twenty-three. Mm. John, you require 80. See the frustration. Up, up, and away. 60. Flight. Gary, you require 134. Well, this would be some way to finish. Top stops. 114. Oh, wasn't too far away either. John a little bit of a grimace 20. on Gary's face. No, he would have felt like that was going in when it's come out of his hand. Big pressure on the double ten. No score. Gary so requires 20. Gets a stab at double ten. Well, what a relationship he's had with this over the last couple of days. Is it going to get him a win that moves him? On to six points. One left. Oh. No score. It was that close. Charlie Corsby had to double 20. check. Couldn't have gone any closer. Nor could that one. Game so shot on the six play. John Nelson. And we go the distance. We go 3-3 three, three for the first time today. Prior so to this, we see leg. the carry to throw flurry first. of four ones Game and on. four nils. But we have our first last leg decider. We have our first, what we like to call at the Super Series, all the best leg. 96. Forty five. One hundred and forty. That one forty wrestles this deciding leg in Gary Stafford's favour. One hundred. But it may only be a temporary measure, as Nelson responds in kind. Eighty-three. You can tell the grimace on his face. He knows if he just kept it straight, he would have been on a finish. Nelson. 140. 140. Doesn't leave him on an out shot, but it leaves him in a handy, a handy enough position. 80. Untimely time for a bounce out. 80. Recovers well with the last. But Nelson here can pile the pressure on in with just a solitary treble in this visit. When I say treble, I meant 20, John. 40. Gary, you require 100. And the frustration ekes through as Stafford returns for 102 to seal a 4 3 success and to move him onto six points in this group. On for the treble 14s. 45. Well, that was a 
John, you require 136. Chaotic, he leaves himself on 57 if this 136 doesn't go, which it won't. And so Stafford returns to the 57 to see this game through. Gary, you require 57. Tops is what he wants. 37. And Tops is what Johnny eludes Johnny requires him. 78. And so Nelson returns for the match for a 4-3 win. It's going to be the solitary dart. 58. But that one drags below. And so it's another double 10 shootout. Johnny requires 20. Stafford missed a handful of this double in the previous leg to win the match. Can he get over the line with it this time? Game yes, is the answer. And the match. And Gary, Gary Stafford. Stafford gets the better of John Nelson by four legs to three. It moves him on to six points in this group. Stafford getting over the line for a 78 average in the end. The highlight being a 116 checkout. He gets the better of John Nelson. We're going to take a short break. Upon our return, Chris Mason's going to give his assessment on the balcony. And then we've got a big game that's going to ensue as Sam Kankit takes on Robert Thornton. A win for a four for the Fawn. And he is in full command of this group, eh? Join us for that after this short break. Well, it's that part of the day where Chris Mason joins me to reflect on what's happened so far. Chris had it all prepared that all of the matches were one-sided, <laughs> and then a 4-3 where both players are missing bucket loads of darts at double. Yeah, it was it was a lot of pressure on that one. There's a, a fair fair bit of bragging rights to be had, and and how you then settle on for the for the rest of the week. And uh, Gary Stafford just getting the better of John Nelson. Yeah, some uh, not so perfect darts in that one, but Stafford getting over the line, as Chris said. We are going to talk perfect darts though now because it is our two-year anniversary of this tournament. And twice here have we seen perfection struck, nine dart finishers by the same player as well. Take a look at this. This would be quite popular. <coughs> if he can fill it up that? again. We know the route. Steve Brown 
missed it early on today. But Connor he's Heenan, the he's Connor the man Heenan. as he hits a nine dart finish. The first of the Motors Super Series. Heenan firing in Whoa, for a second 180. 180, a back to back 180. He's the last player to hit a nine darter. The only man to do it under this roof. Connor Heenan, 141. They say history has a habit of repeating itself. Can it? Double 12. He's only going to do it again. He really is Connor the man. Heenan. He's the only man who's hit a nine daughter under this roof, and now he's got two. Yeah, remarkable stuff from Connor Heenan, who almost hit another one in the final. Yeah, on that Saturday would have been his fourth. Night. Yeah, <laughs> incredible. Uh, we'll take a look at all of the nine darters that have been hit then since we started two years ago. So those two here. Uh, the first one, incredible, James Richardson against his own son. Yeah, and it was it was a it was a brilliant match as well, and it was locked at three three, uh, and and Josh himself had a very good leg before, yeah, his pops produced the perfect nine, and then of course he had another one against Richie Burnett, and right in the early stages when we were still doing it from home during the the lockdown lockdown, Martin Adams had one, didn't he? Just around his was it his sixty fourth birthday or something? Yeah. Yeah, in, in, incredible, but loads of great ones in there. Colin Osborne, Martin with a, another one against Jamie Caven, and then another one against Scott Williams. So we've got two players that have had three apiece. Yeah, Martin Adams, <coughs> two in this format. Heenahan, three, almost four. Danny Van Tribe got his first ever nine dart in front of the cameras. Graham Usher, I would wager, would be the fastest out of those. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That took uh, about 30 seconds. <laughs> right, well, back to today's darts. Maybe we'll get one today. Who knows? The man... Up next, certainly no stranger to an iron dart finish. Robert Thornton, of course, had one in double start tournament. But this is a big match now between him and Sam Kanker. If Thornton wins this, he can really start to take command of this group, can't he? Yeah, well, we said at the top of the show this morning that we thought that Robert Thornton might come out and be the first player to make a move, and, and that's been it. He's been absolutely solid throughout. We had a great performance from Lee Cox last time out, and Sam Kanker was on the end of a... A bit of a shoe in there, so he's under it against Robert Thornton in this match. Yeah, both players, though, capable. Kankit has shown at times his maximum hitting, which Mace has mentioned. And if he does win this, then they're level at the top again. So uh, without further ado, let's get the battle underway. Mace is going to head downstairs to join Henry. Yeah, thank you very much, Chris and Chris. And so how is Sam Kankit going to respond from that game against Lee Cox not too long ago? He hasn't had much time to prepare between that and this one but that might not be a bad thing all things considered up against him Robert Thornton who just looks as if he's got a bit of mojo about him today averages of 88 followed by 98 if he can increase from there well we'll see the highest average of the week bar none and he's a man who knows this format as well as anybody else he knows the significance of a good Tuesday here at the Super Series and first leg it's Sam to throw first Game since on. that performance against Gary Stafford, well, he had been unbeaten. That's the sound can't get. He will be looking for a response. That is for sure. That's not a bad way to start. First start, plumbing the trouble, 20 AC bed. And be disappointed with the two bedfellows. Sixty. Sam Kankit going off 11 to 10. Robert Thornton 4 to 6 of the bookmakers. 85. A lot of that will be primarily. 60. To what we saw from Sam Kankit in that previous match against Lee Cox. 59. One hundred. Yeah, big, big game this one for Sam. And we'll want to... Sixty. Well, I'll just get rid of the the memories of that match against Lee Cox, where it just didn't happen for him, did it? 74-54, the average. And, well, we've not seen him produce numbers as, as low as that so far. 
Happy to give him the benefit of the doubt of an anomaly in terms of that particular 128. performance. 128. Yeah, it can happen. It can happen. Especially the, the barrage he faced in the early part of the match. I think Cox was, was irresistible 95. early on, wasn't he? 95. Sam, you require 88. good response here. 88 after 15. Imperative that he holds this early on in this match. You know how much of a, a great front 63. runner. Robert, Robert you require is. 126. First cry of O Robert we've heard so far today. 82. Sam, you required 25. Can't get returns for 2 8 to the opening leg. Nine. At first, I really did obscure Robert, the bed, didn't it? Thornton looks to go Motown. Four. Sam, you require 16. Both players have opportunities to win. Well, it's been quite Sam a scrappy Kankit. opening leg, but it is in the leisure of Sam Kankit. Yeah, Thornton will be a, a little frustrated there. He was given a, an opportunity. I'm sure first. he didn't think Game on. he was going to get. Only how well, good tops he normally is. 140. This is go-to double, isn't it? How did they... Did you make a note of the price on this one before the offer? Yes, and Kankit was 11 to 10, Thornton 4 to 6. 55. 121. 108! Well, it's looking very good at the minute. Or is it? Well, I think these two have just found their key now, haven't they? After a scrappy opening, leg it a bit. Fulton has left himself 60 after nine. He's on for a four visit leg. 50. To level this Robert, game back up. 60. Tops of the four. Old Faithful. Game oh, shot faithful. on the second leg. Doesn't miss Robert this time. Thornton. Left his lines in leg one, but that was a 12 dart hold in leg two. Third leg, it's Sam to throw first. Game on. One hundred and eight. Yeah, we'll ignore that first leg. That was an outlier. The quality ever since has been marvellous. One hundred and eight. <laughs> Whatever you can do, I can do. I'm not sure if you mentioned it a little earlier, mate, but congratulations to Jack Vincent, who won the East of England ADC Moda Super Series qualifier. He will be here. One hundred on the twenty seventh to the thirty first of March. Well done, Jack. Yeah, really nice lad is Jack. A point of, when, when he was here, he, he was one of those players who made a point of making sure he saw all the production staff. He wanted to see everything that went on in and around here. So he's nosy. Yeah. 85. Sam, you require 164. That's a nice touch when people take the time to have a look and appreciate the hard 59. work. 59. Robert, goes you into require 136. Huge amount of staffing involved in bringing you these 100. images. Sam, you require 105. 105. Maybe the the 20 was sat up and he's opted for 13 and double 16 off the 45. Robert, you require 36. 36 for 13 and 2 Game one. Shot on the third leg. Robert wow, Thornton. What a response this has been from Robert Thornton. 4th leg, it's Robert to throw first. Game on. I think what happened in that last game yesterday really round Robert up, and we are seeing the best of him as a consequence of that. 
Averages of 88 and 98 today in the 95. 95. Comes amidst a leg that he lost, having already thrown seven times. One hundred. Well, Robert just about got the better of Sam yesterday. Full three. One hundred and thirty-four. He's already avenged the defeat yesterday to Gary Stafford in emphatic style. Sixty. The other mission today is chocolate. 127. Hitting absolutely everything right now. 100. Robert, you require mood. 145. Six and one, four, five. Well, he may only need the three. He may only need the three. 125. You fancied it to go as well, didn't you? This could be back to back. 13 dark legs for the fawn. 140. 140 Robert, just feels 20. academic. Double four. Game shot on the fourth leg. Like Robert Thornton. Let's see. 14 darter. After losing the opening leg. Fifth leg, it's Sam to throw first. 23 Game darts. On. Thornton's reeled off three legs in. 39 darts, 12, 13, and 14. 85. 85. I mentioned chocolate when he's averaging 99, and 36. those flicks will be chocolate ones. He's coming up roses. One That's a sweet spot for Sam Kankit. That's his third. Max and he's three one down and every time one's been hit, another one has followed. Now had six in this match, three apiece. Sam's walked into eighty. Another one today. Walked into one against Lee Cox, didn't he? Who averaged hundred point two three. One hundred and twenty five. Sam over a ton himself. One hundred and forty. Robbie require one hundred and sixty. Seen him do this a few times. Mm. That would have been Sam Kankit's luck today, wouldn't it? Yeah. Sam, you require sixteen. Yeah, that would have summed up his day. But there's pressure on the double eight with Thornton waiting on tops for the win. No score. Robert, you require forty. Well, this has been a divine performance from Robert Thornton. Can he finish it off with this double tent to say four one success? And, match. and what Robert a performance Thornton. that was from Robert Thornton. It's his second consecutive average of 98.6 as he gets the better of Sam Kankit by four legs to one in a brilliant encounter, a bruising affair. Three maximums apiece, four from 11 on the doubles, a 98 average for the fawn. He really is showing up and playing some of his best stuff today, isn't he? He's becoming the move on moving day. He moves on to 12 points at the top of the group. As being Standy has a four point buffer at the top. After the break, we'll see Richie Housen in action. He's looking to move on to eight points if he can get the better of Gary Stafford.
Welcome back to the Modus Super Series, where Robert Thornton really is starting to take charge of Group A this week. The Scotsman off to a flying start on Tuesday. He's just tearing through the field and he's just got a very, very good win against Sam Kankett, the Welshman. A 4-1 success for Robert Thornton. A very decent display as well. 98.6 average for the Scotsman in that one. Uh, he hit three 180s in the game as well. Brilliant stuff from him, the man, of course, who won the World Seniors Championship earlier this year for the second time. And the man that he beat in the final is about to take to the stage, Richie Housen, who made it through to finals night last time he was here, is about to go up against Gary Stafford, fresh off the back of his first win of the day. Stafford got that with a 4-3 success against the ADC qualifier John Nelson to move clear of him at the bottom of the table. Stafford then looking to do what he did yesterday and have a better end to the day than how it started. Housen though looking to just cling to the coattails of the thorn. Let's see if he can do it in the company of Chris Mason and Henry Deacon. Thank you very much Chris. Yeah big game ensuing here for Richard Housen if he's going to harbour any ambitions of qualifying for a group A. Realistically, he has to win every game for the rest of the day to kind of keep him in the mix. Yeah, absolutely. And he'll want to bounce back from that defeat, although it did play very well. 93-21 in defeat to a rampant Robert Thornton so far today, who's averaging around about 94-95 for the, for the day so far. They go 2-9. to nine. Richie House in here, 3-1, to one, Gary Stafford and... Yeah, I'd probably back Richie Housen in the handicap here, maybe maybe minus one first point. First leg gets Richie to throw first. Game on. And minus one point five, Richie Housen. Four to seven. When I break down all the numbers and look at the the performances so far today and yesterday. Sixty. It's uh it's tough. 4 1, Richie won this tie yesterday. Um, if they play to type, it will be a similar result. Especially 59. with Housen having the throw as well. Other qualifiers, you've been having a 60. mooch about with regards to the ADC. If you are a, an amateur player and don't hold a, a tour card, and you want to play in the Moda Super Series. 125. Get yourself involved in the amateur, amateur dart circuit, the ADC. You can find them across all social media platforms. And you can play in there. It's the Vault Series, isn't it? 140. And, uh, qualify like John Nelson has this week. Yeah, Tony Wood's going to be the qualifier next week. You're... Old pal. Yep, my old pal, Tony Wood. 96. Made a bit of pairs with Tony way back when. Yeah, we've got Tony Wood next week, and then the week after that, we've got Jack Vincent coming down. And those two have already qualified before, haven't they, via the 140. ADC. And there's opportunities throughout the country, and it's literally throughout England, Scotland, Wales, and I do believe it's over in Ireland now. It's moving in. I think the next series is going to be out in Northern Ireland, the Republic of Ireland. We're going to have a number of players from ADC Oceana as well coming over in Series 4. I think that's on the back of Raymond Smith's success, of course, who was the winner of Series 2. Very popular winner as well. Conan Whitehead, the winner of 47. Series 1. Gary Require, He's 81. going to get their hands on the 20 grand in Series 3. Double 12. Game shot on the first leg. Gary Stafford. Beautiful 14 dart break of throw. Second leg, it's Gary to throw first. Game on. Yeah, Harrison there, just in deep thought, thinking, what on earth is going on today? 60. Will be our ADC qualifier up next after this one, taking on Lee Cox. He was in blistering form 95. last time out. 
against Sam Kankett. 80% on the doubles, a ton plus checkout, 120, an average of 100.23, 3180s. We will be buzzing right now. Yeah, on the subject of the vault, 100. head over to at Dart Circuit on Twitter and you can head over to the Amateur Dart Circuit website for more information on how you can get involved and how you can be here at the Super Series. And look what it's done to the likes of Adam 21. Warner, for example. Now a tour card holder. And even people like Adam Mould, who been around the circuit, played in many events over the years, finally got his big chance and took full advantage of it, qualified for Champions Week. 27. I was looking at the list of qualifiers yesterday. It was two Euro 45. qualifiers, of course. And many familiar names here at the... Well, many familiar names that have played in the Super Series. Jim Williams. 55. I think he got through in both, didn't he, Jim? Yeah, he did. He was one of the ones that doubled down. Nick Kenny as well, qualifying for Euro Tour 5. A player that's graced the stadium, Matt Campbell, of course. 40. On the one just before Christmas. Dylan Slevin, of course. He played in December. Adam Smith Neal, qualifying for 55. Euro Tour 6. Aaron Monk back as well. Yeah, Aaron Monk. Another regular here. Prior to picking up a card, Gian Van Veen. 68. King Barry, who played in the very early stages. And congratulations to friend of the Super Series, John O'Shea. And George Killington. Good to see. 97. George making good progress. Produced some really good stuff, didn't he, when he... Took part down in Southampton. 96. One of those players who Richie was destined to win a tour card, didn't he, from yeah. the previous venue. His house and destined to win this second leg. Ooh. Uh, yeah, he's seen Full this rubbish because he shouldn't Gary be anywhere near that 93. dark. Big 20 to leave double 16. And he's not had a lot of luck on double 16. I'm amazed he didn't go 12 tops, which he has been hitting. That was an attempt at the double 19. 57. The double 18. Richie required 32. Friend or foe, Richie. Game shot on the this second time. Leg. He's Richie rekindled Housen. his relationship with the double 16 to level this game up at one apiece. Very important. Third leg gets Richie to throw back. first. Game on. Kim Hybrids also did the double yesterday, qualifying for five and six. Playing well at the minute, isn't he, Kim? Yeah. Yeah, won his first PDC Pro Tour event. 180! Like eight, eight years. Which feels staggering. Yeah. Around about the time he was a Premier League player, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, memories 60. Of, of that match in the Grand Slam against MVG. It was, well, it was the match that he produced the nine data as well. And we really expected him to... To kick on from there and 91 quite happened for him in the last year 18 months he's been playing brilliant but keeps keeps getting squeaked six four six five with big averages we well, saw it from chris doby didn't we where that kept 100. happening kept happening it only took one breakthrough and look at where he is now yeah not doing too bad is he wouldn't mind being a pound behind him would you there's another one hundred and eighty. Second in the leg. One eighty. Ninety-one. One eighty. Well, gotta go ball, honey. Route one dart. Ten darts are up for grabs. One hundred. Apologise for winning the leg. Richie required fifty. Boo! He wanted the ball. Oh, okay. The Eleven will do. Eleven will do. Entertain us, Richie! Come on! 
Lavender hold. Full gets Gary to throw first. Two Game on. is in the leg. That certainly make him feel a whole lot better. Can he build from there? As you say, it's imperative that he just doesn't beat Gary Stafford. 60. He's got to beat him heavily because at the moment, Robert Thornton is on 12 points and a leg difference of plus 12. Richie Housen before this one, six points. 60. And no leg difference. A big gap to make up. So what you're saying was he didn't have a leg to stand on. Absolutely. 180. Incredible the confidence 100. that Gary Stafford has taken from that win against John Nelson. You just feel that that's the only thing lacking in the Gary Stafford game. Just 134. Because I like the action. Yeah, belief sends you a long way in this game, and as well as House has played, Stafford 60. kept with him Gary at every Pye single juncture. And he's got six on here for a level match. On the one, two, seven. Game shot oh, on the fourth play. That was a Gary bit of Stafford. beauty, wasn't it? Super, super darts. That is his best leg. Fifth leg, it's Richie to throw a first. Campaign. Game on. For Gary Stafford, that was a 12 darter with a beautiful trouble 20, trouble 9. I like that route. 67. See James Wade doing that a fair bit. 180. Just screams confidence. Yes, exactly that. 60. And he was assertive. Well, we have seen him sort of tend to almost second guess himself. No second guessing here from Richie House. And go on, son. 120. Oh. How desperately unlucky. In and out. And he's not shaking it all about. Eighty. This is where we say he's on Phantom Nine territory. Yeah, if you can go out in ten from here, we'll we'll give him a nine. <laughs> One hundred and forty. All joking aside, in a pivotal leg in this match, he's come up with the best darts of the match. Yeah. Ninety-seven. Richie requires sixty-one. So it's double 16 again. 45. For this time on the inside Why He is going to return with Stafford all the way back on 264. 78. Richie requires 16. To put him one away. And he's still got that luxury of time. Game shot Time the fifth leg. that he doesn't need. Richie Housen. Uh, another solid leg, a 15 darter this time from Richie Housen. Sixth leg, it's going to throw first. Game on. Followed by three holds. Can Richie get it done here? 100. One hundred. Trading tons. Fifty nine. Pressure, of course, on Stafford to take it to the decider. One hundred and forty. One eighty there, but he will. Take the 140. 
We're into game eight of the day, and we've already seen 23 maximums. Yeah, it was 26 46. yesterday. <clears throat> That's going to get obliterated. Might have to turn the board at this rate. Oh, 140. Second treble 20 in the visit back to back 140s. This has been yet another special egg from Richie Housen. 60. Richie required 121. Potential 12 data to finish, although it doesn't have to go this time of ours to give his Stafford all the way back on 236. That's a bit unfortunate because he's got a blocker up there. Ooh, 49. Nearly, nearly found a way in. <clears throat> we'll be back at 72, but how much pressure will he be under? None. 60. Richie requires 72. I have a flat tyre. This time finds the single 20. 40. And again. The double 16, a little elusive. But he's been afforded darts a double because in pretty much every leg, he's been a visit in front. 100. Richie and required so for the 32. Match, his 16th dart, double 16. Game shot Seals the and win the for Richie Halston, which keeps him in the mix at the top of the table on eight points as he gets the better of Gary Stafford by four legs to two, doing so with... Three maximums, impressive scoring power from the Owl. 50% on the doubles too, a 91 average all a great two in the end. It's another impressive performance from Richie Housen on the back of a 92 average to start, a 93 in his second game. Well, he has an average below that 90 mark throughout the course of the day so far. Impressive stuff from Housen. We're going to take a short break. When we return, we're going to see Lee Cox in action. Last time we saw him, he averaged 100 against Sam Kankit. He takes on John Nelson after this short break.
Hello again. We're about to start match nine of today's 15 fixtures, and it sees this week's amateur dart circuit qualifier John Nelson face Lee Cox, who is looking to emerge as the main rival to Robert Thornton to win this group and seal that available spot at finals night. If Cox does win this match, he goes within two points of the league leader, and he faces a thorn in fixture 15 today. A chance to set up a photo finish going into the final furlongs tomorrow. Well, they're under starters' orders from our referee, Charlie Corstafine. So let's hand you over to our commentary team of Henry Deacon and Chris Mason. And we're off. I say, let's not, let's not have a, a false start. <laughs> <laughs> bring them back. Bring them back. Well, at the moment, it's Thornton. That is the horse for the course in terms of the top of Group A. But... Lee Cox will be hoping as the finishing line comes into her at the horizon that he'll be the one who makes that kick over the final couple of hurdles. Because as we know, sometimes you can go a little bit too quick in this format and sometimes you can be caught at the line. First leg, it's John to throw first. Game on. I don't think Thornton's being caught today. But we got it right in the last one. The minus 1.5. There's Richie winning... 177. Beautiful start. Um, I'm still going to say it. Lee, you can get here minus 1.5 at 11 to 10. And he won this tie yesterday 4 0. 100. So fond memories of facing John Nelson. He made a bit of a gallop as well, didn't he, in his previous match, averaging 100.23 4 1 success against San Kankit. Meanwhile, John Nelson just kind of pulled up a little bit, didn't he? towards the line against Gary Stafford, losing out by four legs to three. 95. 58. And if Lee Cox wins this one and 60. You see John, you John has got a better of Robert Ford in a couple of games time, we'll see all the players shoot horned in this group. Forget about the horses. What about the fish? 145. Well, he started the leg with a 177. And very nearly ended it with a 170. Where has this come from? 95. No, there John, was signs of this 25. yesterday, wasn't he? Yeah, one, one game yesterday where... He was very, very impressive. 17. Lee, you require 151. Really? 137. John, you require 8. Good for the average. 15. Game shot on the first leg. John Nelson. Lee Cox would have been thinking, hello, am I going to get a go at this double seven? Alas. Second leg, it's Lee to throw first. Game on. No four at the final hurdle for John Nelson. Swap it, Henry. 45. Not even started the first race yet. Have you, have you had a punt today for our, our 57. Uh, viewers? What, what have you tipped up? At Cheltenham, oof, I think, I think Constitution Hill is the one everyone's talking about. But Fasol Vigo and John Bond could be the other two today. Sixty. That's the Mullins horse, isn't it? Mm. One hundred and forty. Hopefully I don't have a mare. 100. Some people say I've got nay chance. 96. I've had a little e each way punt in the 57. First Lee, you require 80. Is a, a good race for it. Back in each way. Ooh. 40. And I've gone for another Mullins horse there. Diverge. Up to 22 to 1. 
99. Lee, you require 40. We'll talk about the next race in our next match. Game shot on the second leg. Because Lee Cox Lee is Cox. out the blocks. Yep, levels things up with an 18 dart hold of his own. Third leg, it's Sean to throw first. Game on. Forty-four. Sixty. Twenty-eight. Forty one. Ninety three. Fifty nine. One hundred and thirty four. Twenty two. Oh, this one is beginning to go a little bit against the apple cart here. What time's that running? Oh, right. <laughs> Ninety six. Well, the going's good for John Nelson as things stand. Yeah, it's strange performance. 140. From, from Lee Cox. He, John, you require 106. Put one in like this yesterday. And he put one in like this in the opening match of the day. 49. Forty-four. So John, you require fifty-seven for him so far. Game shot on the third leg. Clean John Nelson. All right, John Nelson at the moment. Twenty dart hold and just very comfortable. Fourth leg. It's Lee to throw need first. To do Game on. Anything better right now? After a little bit of a choppy time, Nelson's just looking to 63. calm the waters a little bit, try and steady the ship. Fifty-five. I'll go and get some fresh air in a minute. Horse racing, yachting, boxing, fishing. <coughs> Eighty-one. I've got all sports covered. Just need to enter the realms of rugby now, don't we? I don't think we're talking about rugby at the moment. No, right? no, it's probably for the best. I'm kind didn't, of didn't we get pumped by France at the moment? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad Thibaut Tree Cole isn't here this week, I'll be perfectly honest. Ninety six. And if we were talking about French football, we'll be talking about Will Still, the Reims manager who is nineteen games unbeaten. He doesn't have a professional license, so they 60. pay a twenty two and a half thousand pound fine every single time that they play. Is that right? It's genuinely right. Fifty eight. Yeah. Lee you require one hundred and fifty seven. Wow. Only Tito Villanova has a better record in the Europe's top five leagues after that many games in charge in the twenty first century, the old Barcelona manager. Impressive. One hundred. How's is this leg from Lee Cox? Much better. Forty-five points away. Lee, you require fifty-seven. Leveling things up. Everything gone with throws so far. Lee Cox is going to need a break at some point. Game shot on the fourth and leg. He'd like it to Lee come Cox. in the next leg, and then throw for it in the one after. Fifth leg, it's John to throw first. Game on. Well, these two would know each other.
quite well. 60. Must have played for one of my old county sides, London. 44. He was part of the squad that won the Premier back in the day. 100. One thing he had spoken about quite a lot is his pride of being the London County captain. 140. Yeah, ma massive honour. When you look at the, the names before him that have done the same. 100. Sixty-seven. One hundred. One hundred and twenty-one. Fifty-five. Lee, you require 129. Well, this is an opportunity to get that break of throw. Ninety-three. John, you require 86. And he's left it handy. Forty-six. Oh, Lee, you up require just 36. in case. Just in case. 18. Lee Cox couldn't convert the 36 in three. Oh, that was the opportunity, wasn't it? Well, the yelp of wow summed it up for John Nelson as that well, basically shanked its way into the single one, didn't it? So, double 10. 30. Lee, you require 18. Wow. 10. John, you require 10. Yeah, a bit scrappy. But it is a leg of sheer significance. Yeah, for two, for double four. No score. Hit the Lee, you require two, eight. Miss the double two, miss the double one. So another opportunity for Lee Cox. Can he use it? Game shot on the fifth Certainly leg. Can. Lee Cox. And it wasn't pretty, but ultimately, it's what Lee Cox needed. An all important break of throw. Sixth leg, it's Lee to now throw first. Has the opportunity to serve it out and get it wrapped up 4 2, but. 26. It's becoming a little erratic. Well, if you actually have a look at Lee Cox's averages so far, he averaged 74 against Richie House, and then he averaged 100.23 against San Kanka, and he's now averaging 76. 99. Yeah, there's there's no B game, which is it's something to work on. I mean, yesterday he started with 100 and 81, then at a 77, then at 103.66, and then at an 85. 140. And then at an 81, it's very, if it was a graph, it would be, uh, yeah, a little up and down. 80. <clears throat> and now he's in a spot of bother. 99, 140 for John Nelson. 24. Well, if his performances was a pie chart, there'd be no puff pastry in it. 45. 140. Nelson just trying to do his best to take full advantage of it. 55. 
John, you're requiring 98. Fielded two players going through the mill a little bit here. Eighty. It's going to return for the double nine with Cox all the way back on one nine five. How much pressure can he apply? Ninety five. John, you require Some eighty. He's himself on a two data with Nelson on double nine. He's going to split, but wow, he's hit the fifteen, and so it's going to be one double one. No score. Lee, you require one hundred. This 100. is sheer shredsville at the Super Series. Tots of the win. Game shots. Well, I don't the match. quite know how. Lee Cox. Right, Lee Cox has got it done. Four two. Some disastrous doubling and approach play from John Nelson. Just two from thirteen on the doubles, but it is Lee Cox who gets important two points and he closes the gap to Thornton to just two points Thornton on 12 Lee Cox on 10 when we come back Richie Housen faces Sam Kanke This is the Moda Super Series. One hundred and eighty. If you are in or around the Portsmouth area, you could be here on Saturday night as well. Tickets available absolutely free of charge via dartshop.tv. Head there 
to book yours and join us here on Saturday for finals night. But here on Tuesday, six of today's ties remain. And the first is a penultimate outing of the day for the Owl Richie Howson and his Welsh opponent, Sam Kankit. Both are perched in promising positions in the Group A table, tied on eight points. And one will take the baton here and stay on the heels of the top two. So to talk you through the action, I'll hand you back to Chris Mason and Henry Deacon. Thank you very much, Chris. Yeah, this is an important match in terms of keeping tabs, as you say, with the man at the top of the pile in Robert Thornton. Now, if you look at performances so far today, you would have Richie Housen as a favourite, and that is exactly how the bookmakers go. He's one to two on to grab the two points here, while Sam Kankit is a six to four outsider to go on and win this particular match. He's been the most consistent performer of the week with the exception of, of that middle game, didn't he, where he averaged 74.54 against Lee Cop, but then he recovered, he averaged 87 and was kind of on the other end, the receiving end of a Robert Thornton masterclass. Yeah, absolutely. And, well, I don't quite know how we got the, the last one right, but we did tip up minus... 1.5 for Lee Cox, and he obliged at 11 to 10. Like so it's our selection first. so far out there is good at Cheltenham. But yeah, I, I, I can't see anything here, but a, a, a Richie House and win. He looks, he looks locked in and solid as a rock so far. I'd say there's 100 over the day. I mean, he won the opening match 4-1 against Lee Cox with a 92-26. And then was on the end of yeah, another Robert Thornton masterclass you mentioned. In fact, it was an identical average, wasn't it? 98.6 is first of the two 98.6 averages, and he lost 4-1. But again, averaged into the 90s, 93.21 there. 100. And then last time out, defeated Gary Stafford 4-2 with a 91.06. I mean, that is absolutely rock solid. Nine, so you equate that all together, you can put a rough average around about 92 for the day as far as Richie Housen is concerned. Yeah, solid. Absolutely solid. So that, that means you, you know, on your own throw, he's always there or thereabouts, and he's going he's gonna to get odd darts to, to break. And we know that's his baseline level because... He played in the final of the World Seniors Championship 100. and his average in that final over the K to seven sets was 90.97. Yeah, yeah, close to 91 in that region. That's where he's at. Which, you know, when you, Easy one. you put it up against elite level darts, yeah, there's a, there's a difference, but you certainly see plenty of averages and winning averages around 91 at the... 140. I mean, I think, Richie required I think 158. Andrew Gildin's average for the tournament was around 94, wasn't it? To win the UK Open. Oh, Scott Mitchell dropped off the Pro Tour of a yearly average of around about 91, 92 for yeah. a 12 98. month running average. Sam, you require 65. Yeah, that's frightening. Game shot on the first leg. That's frightening. Sam Kankit. Yeah, beautiful from Kankit. That's a 14 dart break of throw in. In leg one. Second leg, it's Sam to throw first. Game on. Richie's thinking, not again. I happened to him yesterday a couple of times, didn't it? 100. Right. It's one of those moments where you, you walk off and you sort of shake your head and think, well, I don't get it, what happened? 60. 60. The highest average we have seen here at the Super Series in 100. 2023 came from Martin Wolfie Adams. Champions Week against Colin Osborne. 59. 111.33 that average. Actually, if you compare it to 
the highest averages that have been recorded in the PDC Tour this year. It would put him in and around the top 10 highest average this year, belonging to Luke Humphreys, an average of 119.15. Yeah. Yeah, that was the other week on the Pro Tour, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, they're mad numbers. One of them comes from Ben Robb. The third highest comes from Ben Robb, who we've seen here at the Supers. 115.04. Amazing enough, that's a player who've had a tour card. 121. Yeah, my PB over a, a big, big sample. So it was over 19 legs was against Adrian Lewis in the 60. UK Open Richie on stage required 122. And Adrian himself had nearly a 107. It was a, a remarkable game. I have had higher over a best of five, but I don't really count. Game shot on the second leg. That's the way Richie to Housen. bounce back. He had another ton plus for the day in terms of averages. Third leg, it's Richie to throw first. That was Game a on. 15 dart break back. We've had a few today, haven't we? Ton plus outs. We've had 107 from Richie. 132. 100. Thompson. 120 from Lee Cox. So 116 from Gary Stafford. 127 from Gary against Richie. 95. A ton in the last one to win it for Lee. And then a 120 there from Richie Housen. Well, Richie Housen here is being what I like to call the moniker consistency. He's had seven tons in this match and he won that previous leg in 15. 140. He's doing what he needs to do. And the average now moving up to 98 and a half. He's doing Richie Housen stuff. 125. The owl is doing it by day. Ninety-seven. Thinking. Like that idea, because the fifty-one would have left the one thirty, which only needs the 60. one treble in the combination. Richie required one hundred and sixty-four. If he thinks to himself, I'll just take a one forty here to leave double twelve. Not even worry about the finish. And we know today, he loves a 140, doesn't he? 85. Not be quite as pleasant. No. The 85. Clattering of flight on flight. 85. Just got Richie watch requires 79. Sam, he tends to climb up onto his toes. That encourages a bit of shoulder. Double 11. Fifty-seven. No situation. Sammy She's required one hundred and thirty-six. Get that burnt dart out of the way if you do, in fact, miss. He was looking for forty-eight. Ninety-two. Richie required twenty-two. The player that hit so many trouble twenties is him. I'm surprised he's even thought about that. Game shot that on the third better. leg. Richie Housen. Much more aggressive from Richie Housen. Sixteen dart hold. Fourth leg, it's Sam to throw first. Game on. And I suppose it's easier to be aggressive with three in hand as opposed to two because you worry about burning it with the first dart and having to check and then not having a dart a double with the last. Yeah, but the problem with them not being aggressive and sort of putting one out there, if you do come inside with the final dart, you've got that edgy burnt dart on the single three to leave the double four. Um, 140. We've got plenty of examples of that going wrong. Plenty of them over two years here at the Super Series. <laughs> Plenty of me, from me. 86. <laughs> Worked out okay in the end. Oh, yeah. 91. So how you start. It's how you finish. 41. 57. As they say, failure, never final. 47. Who is going to make the final this week? You can be here for the yes. finals this week. Come and join us.
Come and have a selfie with me and Henry. 100. Only a tenner ago. <laughs> Yeah, make a night of it. There's plenty to do in and around Portsmouth on a Saturday. Come off Keys. 140. They're there for a bit of afternoon grub. There's a Ooh, few yeah. places, you know, nearby the venue where you can... I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind a bit of that. See, down there, a bit of afternoon dinner. Couple 133. Of, of Richie of Vino, and then head over here, watch a bit of darts, and then go and slum it down Pop World. <laughs> wallop. This be a wallop. Finish for Housen. He will not take out the 1 3 3. So can get back to the top. A bit of Desmond 40. action at the live lounge. Oh. And again, it's just climbing on his toes. No and score. Just encourages him. Richie Rakaev, 40. Just the shoulder to come round. Will be costly, you'd think. Been good up here. Not been bad down here. Game shot on the fourth leg. Solid Richie House on the final dart. That's three consecutive legs for Richie House and after a wonderful start to throw first. from Sam Kankit. Now that last dart there was the perfect example of how you use a marker. Pretty much clattered off the barrel of the second into the bed. And Housen is a leg away. It's yet another 140. His fourth of the game. One hundred and thirty-four. A, a breakdown of the stats later. Just to just want to have a look how many one forties he's hit today. Where we are in terms of one eighties now, pal. It was twenty-six yesterday. 140. Right on cue. Yeah, another 140. So about that magical figure of 23. 59. So we're not too far off. We're into game 10 here. Haven't had a 180 since that 180 fest from Housen against Gary Stafford. None in the game between Nelson and Cox. Still waiting our first in this particular encounter. 60. We may not have long left in this particular encounter. No, it's only 161 away. Two trouble twenties here. Leave the 170. 98. Richie require 161. That means he doesn't have to go for this. Just the setup. He'll go back up now for the trouble 137. 20 to leave 24. And that is pretty perfect. It's another impressive performance from Richie Housen. Another average, 57. way in excess of the 90 Richie mark. Richie 24. As he stares down, double 12. For a 4 1 success to put him within Game a couple of points and the match. on the top of the Richie table. Housen. And here's a 95.26. This is best average of the day so far on the back of a 91, a 93, and a 92. He really is putting on a spur, isn't he, here, the Owl? 95.26, 50% on the doubles, a 120 high checkout. There is not much not to like from that performance. As for Sam Kanker, 85, one from three on the doubles. He can count himself unlucky again. He's walked into yet another really good performance as the talented Welshman. We're going to take a short break, and it is the man at the top of the table, Robert Thornton, who is in action. He takes on John Nelson, and that's coming up after this short break.
Well, so far today at the Super Series, well, it's kind of been Lee Cox and Richie House and posing all the questions and Robert Thornton coming up with all the answers. The Scotsman is the league leader at this stage. He plays his penultimate match of the day here against the man at the bottom of the table, John Nelson. And Thornton has won all of his matches so far today. In fact, he's won them all by the same 4-1 scoreline. So can the man from Ayrshire, the World Seniors champion twice, can he carry on that run with another 4-1 victory, or at least a victory? Nelson looking to get level with Gary Stafford on six points at the bottom of the pile. To talk you through it, Chris Mason and Henry Deacon. I, for one, expect Robert Thornton again to put in something quite impressive. And we've been again delving into the bookmakers markets and some of the handicaps odds ahead of this one. And Chris Mason, you've picked out another one of your aces acker tips. Yeah, minus 2.5. I mean, he's one to four, Thornton. I mean, if you, if you, if you like those kind of punts, then fill your boots. But if you're looking for a, a little bit of value... Minus 2.5 is 5 to 4. Again, this is not an opinion. It's literally breaking down all the stats and all the data, all of the averages. The first leg, Thornton it's Robert to throw the first. Darts. Game on. And the fact that he lost to on Nelson yesterday, and I can assure you that will not sit well with chocolate. Uh, knowing as, I'm, as I do, you want to come out and make a little bit of a statement. Well, he's posted back-to-back -back averages of 98.6. Yeah. And when you look at the, the numbers from John... 180! Yet another max from Thornton. Uh, John's put in averages of 79, 74, 134. 73. Fifty-seven. Do you think perhaps some of the freedom that John was playing under on day one has turned into a little bit more pressure on day two, perhaps? Yeah, I think I think him and Gary have both been guilty of trying too hard, but... In all fairness, I, I I wouldn't like to be in a group with Sam Kanker, Lee Cox, John, you and Robert Thornton. You know, they're, they're four players that have all produced some 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 solid numbers over the course of well, 84. nearly two Robert, days you now. It's a tough school. The problem is, of course, it's looking likely that Stafford, four. Nelson, and Either Sam or, well, it's looking like Sam John, you or require possibly 86. Lee at the moment will go into a horrendous Group C. Game shot on the first lay. John Nelson. He either smashes it instantly or doesn't get it at all. Second leg, it's John to throw first. That was an Game on. 86 checkout in two and a 14 dart break of throw. In a leg that. 60. Thornton hit a max in. 60. And it's interesting when you look at the two wins 60. that John got yesterday. It was against Thornton. It was against Kankit, the top two in the table at that time. It's when the, when the shackles are off, there is a player in John Nelson. There's absolutely no doubt about that. 100. 100%. Absolutely. But again, you can play county, you can play Super League, you can play tournaments. Nothing prepares you from, for playing under the lights. Literally, 85. You know, there's, there's nowhere to hide. There's cannot be defensive. And how many times do we see it back in the day, back in the, the old BDO days, where a player would do so well on the floor all season, go into a lakeside championship as maybe a, a number four, number five seed, but hadn't played on TV before, and as a consequence, underneath that light, they can get a bit of stage fright. Absolutely. I mean, it took me forever to get a... Well, it felt like forever, but... It was 40. A, it was a couple... It was a fair few attempts just to get one win. I think I played four or five times on TV before getting a getting a win and then once you 96. get that win you, you can build off it you've got 
you've got positive memories rather than negatives. 180. Thornton's done that a few times on the telly. Fifty nine. Robert, you require one hundred and thirty six. Sixty one. One hundred and twenty five. John, you require one hundred and twenty six. Well, two nil lead. That's the move across. He is going to find a route now. For the ball! 78. Robert, you require 11. Three double four. Ooh. Mm, it was a bit too close to the... the tr oh. No score. And John, you require 48. Well, I don't know how, but he's going to find himself 2-0 down. 81. Robert, you require 11. Gasp. From the players' room next door. Be a gas from Robert if this doesn't go in. Seven. John, you require sixteen. A two-nil lead. And to put him halfway towards back-to-back -back victories. No He's score. Two-time world senior champion, you and you couldn't four. have. Three darts, a double eight plate, any closer without Game going in. Second, and Robert Thornton equalises. Third leg, it's Robert how... to throw first. Game on. Yeah, you can see the, the shake of the head from John Nelson. He... Disconsolate figure, isn't he? And he's 44. Just a... Again, that's something you, you have to learn. I, I was terrible at it, still am. You've just got to forget it. The great players, you wouldn't... There's no tell. 96. You wouldn't know if they're 6-0 up or 6-0 down. 140. I could almost read the mind 77. of John Nelson. He, in, the, in the back of his mind, he's thinking, now what the how am I? How am I one all? Why aren't I two nil up and playing with freedom? Why isn't the pressure 60. on my opponent? All those things just stir around in your mind. One hundred and forty. Amazed. I discussed this with with Nico and with Matt Edgar that the. I thought sports psychology would really make a massive impact in, impact in darts because it is very much played between the ears at every level. 96. Robert, you require 160. One of those are the, these tops. When you think of Ronnie O'Sullivan, 85. he Peters, didn't he? John, you require what 92. What that made to his career? The combination of that and Ray Reardon was remarkable. 16 here for Nelson. Game two on one lead. And I think as well, John with Nelson. a lot of the younger players these days, they could probably do that. I think we live in a world that's so dictated by it's numbers and analytics, on. and it's drifted from other sports like football and cricket down into darts. And I think a lot of young players could be all consumed by their averages. And Robert Whitwood was here a couple of weeks ago and we we're having a, a, a conversation in, in the practice room about averages and things of younger players. And you know, he's, he said to me, someone asked him once, what was his average? He said, I lost. And that was the only, that's the only thing he worried about was the, the winning and, and losing 60. element of it. And sometimes he thinks that Younger players could be all consumed by what they're averaging when they win, and that that's not good enough. But sometimes you just got to win by hook and by crook. Easy. Yeah, I, I I think it's I think it's a useful tool. I mean, I was the first one to come out. That, you know, they don't they don't write the, your average on your your winner's check. They they just write how 100. much. One hundred. Ultimately, the that that aspect of the game with the the numbers and the data, it's it, it should be a useful tool to. To really analyze, not, not the end average, see where 
there is peaks and troughs and uh, I like looking at have averages of uh, a player's average against throw, a player average with throw, uh, a player's average when he's trailing, a player's average where 21. it goes when he's leading. And those those are the kind of things when, when I do work with players and uh, and you sort of look into their game. And like I say, so you delve a little deeper than, right, what was your finishing stats? What was your average? You know, because that's why sometimes here when we, we say at an end of an average that or end of a match, the average really didn't tell the full story of how well a player played. Um, 41. You know, you can sometimes almost take the, 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 the best leg, the worst leg, take them out, and that'll give you some kind of middle ground. Um, but yeah, 131. I, I you, you know, what was your average? You know, what was your average? Ultimately, as long as you've won, the average is irrelevant unless you're looking to go really deep and see what, why does your game 64. fluctuate? Is there, Robert, is there a reason? Robert, you require 32. Game shot on the fourth leg. This Morton equalises it to a piece in this particular encounter. I think, yeah, but especially when you look at things like this, I think the individual game averages Fifth is not something Roberts that throw first. players should look game on. as an end goal, but maybe you should look at the mean for the day. For example, Richie Halston can take so is that the fact that his averages today are 92, 93, 91 and 95. 58. That is a relevant guide, but sometimes that one incline average, that one decline average, if you focus on that, that's where the problems can creep in. Yeah, you're, the most important average for me is your B game average because, you know, that's that's where matches are, are won and lost. And we, we see a lot of that here, you know, and I always say to, to a lot of the players that don't have a tour card, it's because you don't really have a B game, you know, and in, until you rectify that, you know, those, those, 100. those early matches where you can catch the elite cold, you've got to have a, you've got to have a, it's, it's, you know, your A game takes care of itself. That's self-explanatory. But if you're 57. averaging 98 one minute and then 79, 80 the next, that's ultimately when you're at Q school, unless you have a kind draw and a bit of luck or a bit of rub of the green or good fortune, 50. then you're not, you're not going to cut it. You can also have your say on this debate as well, at MSS 100. Darts on yeah, Facebook, us, Twitter, Instagram. Yeah, let us know your opinion. Let us know your thoughts on it. And like 100. I say, if you, if you look at Richie's mean average for the day, and he's probably not, not a good example because mentally he's very strong. But 83. If, if you played at John, that you level, you would ultimately win way more than, than, you, than you lose. But it's, it's natural for us to look at the... Negative rather than the positive. Robert, you require 108. 54 leaves 54. Leaves his favourite. Game shot and on that's the why it's play. his favourite. Robert Thornton. That is why he is a champion. When he was in the mire. Sick leg, it's John to throw first. Game on. Seeing his back against the wall. If he lost that leg, John Nelson would have been fine for the match. And now he finds himself 99. on the hill as the fawn. Wasn't his most vintage leg, but he found something big in the key moment. And have a look at this as he tries to make a charge now. One hundred and thirty-four. I like this response from John Nelson because it could have been so easy. After that 108 finish, a 140 start 43. from Thornton to just begin to cave in a little bit. Yeah, he, he, there's been many a moment in this match where he could have dropped his head. And I know he was desperately disappointed in his last match 98. against Lee Cox. Looked, not down and out, but looked really disappointed. 58. Irrelevant of John, you require here, so 170. The positives is his two winning legs so far have been in, you know, their five visit legs a 14 darter with a 2 dart 86 out, and a 15 darter with a 3 dart 92 out. And that's good stuff. And again, it's just about trying to consolidate that together into a into a whole package. You could pick, 99. You know, John, you require 74. Of what we've seen from him so far.
game. Sean the Sequoia. John pop, pop, Nelson. Pop, or not at all. And that's a, another 15 darter. Seventh and another... final leg. It's Robert to throw first. Game on. Very nice check out. Ninety-three. To the last leg we go then. Thornton with the darts in the decider. Thirty. We'll continue that conversation about averages in the next match. I just had a very interesting WhatsApp message in regards to that. Eighty-five. 180. What a time to find your first 140 match of the match. 96. What a time to find your first match of the day. Timing is everything sometimes. 83. Ooh. Is it written in the stars? 100. Well, I'd stay there. 133. Robin require 100. 62. Tops, tops, incoming. 60. John, you require 62. To do the double over Thornton and to really open up this Group A race once again. It's going to be the solitary dart. 30. And was the lie Robert, on the single 40. just a bit obscure for him? As Thornton goes to tops himself. One up, one in. For the win. Repeat or revenge. 20. John, you require 32. Huge moment. Significant times ahead. Nelson here was the 11 to 4 dog. Game shot. But Nelson and the is match. the victor John once Nelson. again against the four. And it's two from two against the two time back to back world seniors champion. And Robert Thornton. Walks off the stage defeated. John Nelson there, an 85.53 average, 26% on the doubles, a higher on 92. And so that really opens up the race now for Group A glory at the Super Series. Thornton now left on 12 points. Next up for us is Gary Stafford against Lee Cox. Now, if Lee can get a victory here, he will move level on points with the Thorn. It's getting interesting. We'll see you next.
Well, the tungsten twists and turns continue on Tuesday here at the Super Series. Just as it looks like the direction of the group is going a certain way, things can change very, very quickly. And we saw that in the previous match when John Nelson, for the second day on the spin, got the better of Robert Thornton. A 4-3 success for the ADC qualifier and moves him on to six points along with Gary Stafford, who will look to leapfrog him once again in their mini battle. But for Lee Cox, that opens up a route to join Robert Thornton at the top of the table before their end of day showdown today. So a huge match for him in particular and to talk you through it, our big match commentary team. Well, half of it anyway, Chris Mason and Henry Deacon. Thanks, Murph. Pal, mate, checks in the post. Yeah, huge opportunity. This is the final match of the fourth cycle of games. So Lee Cox has the opportunity to join Thornton on 12 and them to duke it out at around about 20 to 2 this afternoon. And, well, it's looking likely the winner of that one will be our overnight leader and, rightly so, Favourite to win Group A. Well, this is a, a must-win game for this man, Lee Cox. And these two... First leg, it's Gary to throw yesterday. first. Game on. And it was Lee who defeated Gary. And he bageled him 4-0. But I think we're seeing a much better version of... Stafford today 65. as he throws. Well, every time I say something, something like that happens. But uh, Lee, very backable for you short price punters. He's 49. I think Gary Stafford thought it was the World Grand Prix for a second. <laughs> Although your sh short price punters would have got their fingers burned in the last one. I thought it was a foregone conclusion. 93. The way Robert had played all day today he was. Averaging mid nineties for the day, but one hundred to John Nelson. I mean, his winning legs were outstanding, weren't they? Forty. Just going back to that conversation on averages in the break between matches. I've actually had a WhatsApp from. Jack Garwood, I know someone we both know very well. Yeah. With his work at online darts. He said he's not a fan of average tracking. It takes away from just getting a result way too much. He played on the development tour just after the introduction of Dark Connect, and it just said it ruined him as a play. He went from a uni background 60. where stats weren't really tracked, and it, basically the result was the only thing that mattered. And and he, he felt like he had more bottle in beating an opponent because he wasn't thinking about averages and things like that. He felt like the 85. performance became just as important. And then when the averages were tracked, he just felt as if everything went the other way kind of thing. Yeah, well, I, I can echo that. I remember, I can remember playing, well, 100. even now when you play Super League and they use that horrendous darts for windows thing, um, and you sort of get a glance at your average. And, and during the World Seniors, there was a, mo a monitor. 98. Gary, you require 140. It has your average on it. And I, I, I somehow have ended up, my eyes were caught by it. And then I ended up throughout the match going, oh, my God, I'm averaging 60 odd here. 41. What is going on? Lee requires you get, 75. You, you do. You get, you get wrapped up with it. It's horrendous. It is, it's horrendous. But it was the same back in the day when when you were trying to get picked for england or picked for county you 35. were obsessed by Gary the numbers because that was your selection was based on those numbers you know that's that's the thing uh, everything was you know getting picked for county playing super league getting picked for england you know not necessarily results based so i know players that had won nine Lee out of nine in a season 40. playing good level county darts, but because their averages weren't high enough, Game they didn't get picked. The first so, Lee Cox. In, in terms for young players coming forward, yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a, a negative if if you look at it just Second as leg, it's Lee to throw those first. numbers. Game on. But like I say, if you can dig a bit deeper and use it as a positive tool rather than falsified um, out and out reflection of your performance then yeah but I, I i agree with jack on a, a lot of what he's saying there it is it's it's horrendously off-putting and 24. i do feel for the i mean it was bad enough us coming through but it plays such a huge part 
but like I say, it's just a. I use it more as a an indicator forty rather than a an out and out performance based stat. You know, sometimes you can talk uh, about averages early. You know, people go, oh, what's he going about the averages for? It's only two legs. Oh, well, it's an indication of how well he's started and how confident he's feeling. And then you can talk about the average from if it's a, a best, of, if it's a race to 10. 100. You see their average from one to five and then say they're seven, three in front. And then you, you look at legs 11 to, to 15 and you watch a decline. You can then use that as a tool to... 180! Make people at home understand that it's the winning line syndrome. That's why his average dropped off. He's now thinking about winning. 121. I feel like a podcast special coming on there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's just, it's one of those things. It's... It's what you like, I suppose. But... 100. Lee, you require 95. Yeah, I'm not a fan of players being aware of their of their average during a match. I think it's horrendously off-putting. 79. Also a... Gary, you require 150. You get embarrassed, especially if, it, if you're not doing what you want to do. And I, I, I literally was, was horrified, you know, I, that first set in the World Seniors, as soon as, I got, as, soon as I, it got my I couldn't take my eyes off it then, and then I was constantly looking at it thinking, oh God, what are you doing? Because it's morbid human curiosity. Yeah. And then, of course, the, on the, second the, 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 the people course. that watch it and, and, and talk about it will instantly go, oh, oh, look at that, he averaged 70, you know. It's, Third leg, it's we, Gary we to throw first, the time. It's, game on. It's natural from fans, I suppose, to... To make reference to it as a, as an example of how rubbish you are, but if they they don't like you and are a critic, you they they forget when you average over a hundred. You know, it's like it didn't happen. You know, it's like this thing where you go, "Oh, you never won anything." No, no, it didn't. One hundred and forty. I'm not alone. <laughs> Neither did you, but you're criticising me. It's it's one of those we live in that type of world. So we both won the same amount of world championships. We are, mate, yeah. 81. We, we absolutely are. I say yeah. with the tongue in my cheek. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It'd be my fist in there in a minute. 45. He won one more Super Series week. 41. <laughs> I played him one more than him. <laughs> this way, if there was a, if there was an option of 100. pool or darts, I think you'd have more chance at the darts than the pool. <laughs> and that's not saying anything about my darts ability either. 78. I'll see a rematch with Jared Cole. That's what I'm after. I don't think he wants anything to do with it. 100. He nearly retired after that. Well, me going about his business quietly in this one. 140. <laughs> Lee, you require 116. Twenty. Would have left double eighteen. Forty one. Gary, you require one hundred and fifty. Angle of the dart. Caught the flight and skewed it. Fifty six. Lee, you require seventy five. Three no lead. Double break of throw. 55. Uh, Stepper Gary gets a poke of the 94. 94. And for the double 18 to leave himself double top. Game shot on the third line. Top finish from Stafford. Stafford. <laughs> Makes it back to 2 1. It's one for the highlight reel for Gary Stafford. 
Fourth leg, it's Leeds to throw first. A double, Gable. double out. He, well, he missed wire tops, didn't he, for the 1 3 4 early on. 54 tops, tops. 95. Okay, we feel like there's an opening in this match still for him. Well, one thing. It's all was yesterday. Don't take anything 100. for granted. We'll come back and burn you. Eighty five. Sixty. Ninety-six. Sixty. Cox just chipping away here. Very focused on this game, but we'll also have one 65. eye on our final game of the session. Where he takes on table topping for its Thornton. One hundred. Lee you require we'll one hundred and sixty. Final cycle of games with John Nelson against Richie Howson, then Sam Kankit, Gary Stafford. And then it will be this man 30. against Robert Thornton. Talking about Nelson, I've just seen the series one eighty stats, which is one 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 one. 100. Okay. Lee, you require 130. Aye, 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 aye. This be an eye catcher. The ball. Game oh, shot yes. the play. Lee Cox. Beauty. Just love a ball finish. Fifth leg, it's Gary to throw first. 26-180s yesterday on. has been trumped already before we go into... Our final cycle of games. What have we had? 27 now today. 40. Leave so. One hundred and thirty-four. Yeah, twenty-seven maxes for the day. We expect that to go beyond 30 between now and the end of the day. Yeah, 25. Sure. Been a good standard today. Need some really good stuff in places. 140. I think we're all looking forward still, aren't we, to that prospect of Group C on Thursday or Friday morning. That's as good a Group C as I've ever seen. Yeah, it's going to be a, a little bit special, that. 81. Still a few variables, of course. So we will be 140. in Group C. 140. We know we're going to get two of Thornton, Housen, Cox, or Kankit. One hundred and eighty. Lee require eighty-seven. Gary Stafford, his second of the match. Seventy-one. He's going to return for that match-winning double eight with Stafford all the way back on one seven five. Gonna put him. 100. Joint top of the table Lee with Robert Thornton. 16. Game shot. And it is and a 4 match. 1 victory Lee for Lee Cox, who keeps tied to Robert Thornton at the top of the Group A table. Both players after nine matches level on points.
and they will play in the last game of the day to see who will be top of the table overnight. We begin the final round of fixtures after this short break. It sees Richie Houghton, who has been the form horse here on Tuesday at the Super Series in action. He takes on John Nelson, who was the outsider who got past the post against Thornton last time out. Them two go to the starters orders, to the starters blocks after this short break. We are into today's final three fixtures and we currently have a tie at the top of the table. That is between Lee Cox and Robert Thornton who will face off for the outright lead in today's curtain closer. Before that though, Sam Kankit will take on Gary Stafford. But first, it is the final throw of Tuesday for ADC qualifier Johnny Nelson and the man currently occupying position three in the Group A table, World Seniors Championship finalist Richie Housen, who won their maiden meeting yesterday, though Nelson did produce a nice 115 finish in his very first Super Series leg. Right, I'll hand you back to Henry Deacon and Chris Mason to talk you through it. Thanks, Murph. Yep, well, here we go. Our final three matches of the session. That will be two days down, one to go for Group A. And we're still none the wiser after nine matches being completed for all the players of who's going to top this table. Well, into the final furlong we go. It's Thornton and Cox at both neck and neck. Richie Housen just in behind him third. And if he does win here, there'll be a freeway tie for the lead with Thornton and Cox playing the last game of the day to see who will be the outright leader overnight. Yeah, this could well go to a photo finish. I certainly wouldn't be shocked. 7-4, to four, John Nelson, 2-5, to five, Richie Housen, the short price backers. First leg, it's John to throw first. Game their on. Fingers burned in... Match number 11. Normal service resumed in the last one. Where's this one going to go? Well, yesterday, 
Richie was a 4-2 winner. Not particularly convincing from either. But based on today, you just get the sense this is Halson's well, to lose most probably. You look at the averages today, 92.26 against Lee Cox. That was followed up by 93.21. That was a losing average against Robert Thornton, who averaged 98.6 in that one. He then had a 91 against Gary Stafford, and in his previous match, a 95.26. A 4-1 success against Sam Kankit. Yeah, I, I think we brought it up yesterday on, on multiple occasions that Richie Asden was expected to come in and, on Thursday and Friday at a very late call Sunday 60. night and obviously had to make all the necessary arrangements to get down to Portsmouth and arrange transport and everything else. But certainly today, as anticipated... We would see a slightly better version, and he's lived up to that billing. And a lot of it as well comes down to the doubles. You look at some of his performances yesterday. He missed five at double against Lee Cox. He missed a five at double against Robert Thornton. He then missed 11 at double against Sam Kankett in games yesterday. Whereas you look at today's... Four from 10 in his first John match. In his second one from seven. That was the game that he lost, but then... Four from eight and four from eight in his subsequent two matches. He is sharpened up when it has come to the outer ring. Yeah, he's, he's sharpened up on the scoring as 51. well. 51. Richie required 120. Absolutely prolific in terms of 140s. 96. John, you require 57. Tops. 37. Richie requires. It's Richie 40. House and the opportunities may just well come few and far between. 10. Double 10. Game shot. Here's a friend leg. to Richie, Richie House as he breaks the throw in the opening leg. And, well, what was the theme of yesterday? 17 darts. Second leg, it's Richie to throw first. Game on. A lovely message from Daz Lee, who, well, they've on, uh, on a coach from Manchester to Cheltenham, and they've been watching the Super Series en route on the iPad as they're heading into Cheltenham for the festivities. 134. That's a day well spent, isn't it? Oh, not out. Super Series in Cheltenham. Super Series straight into Cheltenham. Wallop. A certain bearded days out. 140. Back to back, 140s. Three now in this match. It's only a leg and a bit 57. old. 57. Forty-five. One hundred. Time keeps him interested in this leg, but it is Halson who is set up quite nicely here with the darts, looking to put up a 2-0 lead in this match. One hundred and forty. That's another one forty. It's the third of a leg. His fourth in the match altogether. And Nelson, well, 140. Just trying to fill it up to Richie try and apply pressure as Halson aims for double 18 for a 13 data, a 2 0 lead. Game shot on the second leg. Tidy, Richie Halson. 14 dart hold to back up the break. Another news that I've just caught up with. We were talking about the third leg. It's Sean to throw first. Game on. Coming up on the 60. 25th and 26th of this month. If you are outside of the UK and Ireland, you can still watch it via 247.tv. 10 bucks for the whole weekend. 100. That's why he's spending a tenner. 
140. The tether that. Two J2Os and two Diet Cokes came to £12.20. Holy moly. 60. Where were you, the Savoy? <laughs> Might as well have been. 46. Eighty one. Eighty five. I lived in Gibraltar twenty odd year ago. You get a bottle of beer for fifty P. <laughs> Those are the days. I could literally go out, two of us. Sixty down John, you require one hundred and seventy all night. Come home with change from 30 quid. I'm going to say, you would have had a pound 60. and you still would have had a good night. <laughs> I had 20 here now, not 50. 60. And at the same kind of time, me and Wazza were in London in a real posh hotel. 135. Uh, John, you require 110. We didn't get change from a £20 note for two pints of lager. <laughs> oh, good recovery, Dart. 94. Richie, you require 65. Loves that trouble 12, doesn't mm. he, John Nelson? Oh, 33 for 32. I love this shot. Love the adjustment of it as well. Game shot on the and third he gets it. Richie House on the doubles. Fifty percent for Richie Housen, and yet again into the nineties average. Fourth leg, it's Richie to throw first. Game on. There's not much more you could have asked of Richie Housen today. Fifty nine. Him and Thornton have set down markers for the rest of the week. They've 59. come out today and they have set the standard for the rest to follow as the days move on. Why we keep talking about Group C? So, but I'll tell you who else I'm looking forward to watching this week. That's Johnny Haynes, because I think he's playing some really good stuff at the minute. Qualify for the last Champions Week. 93. Yeah, good player as, as Johnny Haynes has been for, well, as long as I've known him. That's a, a good few decades. Old sparring partner and pairs partner of 26. Dennis Smith, of course. Same part of the world. Yeah, I used to see Johnny Haynes all over the place at Opens and 57. TDC for many a year as well. Good solid player. That's one of the lightest darts on the planet. 100. Oh, Reggie Housen here closing in on a 4 0 win. 134. And that will take him to plus nine. Remember, at one point we were concerned with the leg difference for Richie Housen, and he's turned that around. <clears throat> 100. John, you require 158. 4-1 on winner over Sam Kankit, and then a 4-2 winner against Gary. 118. Richie requires 76. To move on to 12 points and to really put himself into the mix come the final day of action in Group A. Game Tuesday has been a match. hoot for the Owls. Richie Housen. Richie Housen moves himself on to 12 points. He really has put in some premier performances today.
a 4-0 victory against John Nelson. And that 89.73 was his lowest average of the day. That is how well Richie Housen has played on Tuesday here at the Super Series. As for John Nelson, 88.48, his average. There's some positives towards the end of the day that he really can take into the final day of Group C, uh, Group A action, sorry, should I say, here at the Super Series. It looks as if he's going to be set for Group C action on Thursday and Friday. Two more games to go then for us. It's Kankin against Stafford after this short break. Welcome back, approaching the final furlong here at the Modus Super Series as Sam Kankit takes on Gary Stafford in the penultimate match of Tuesday's session. Stafford looking to move off the foot of the table after John Nelson went down 4-0 to Richie House, and that means Housen is level on points with Lee Cox and Robert Thornton, who will face off in the final showdown of the session for the outright league lead. But in terms of this pair, it's about staying in touch, really. Stafford can join Kankit on eight points. Kankit, with victory, can move within two of the top three. So it's all about staying alive. And I'm going to hand you over to a man who could have been in the Bee Gees, Henry Deacon. No, more the tribute band, the heebie-jeebies. Anyway, so Kankit up against Gary Stafford. Let's quickly move on from that reference there. He takes on Gary Stafford, a win for... Kankit will move on to 10 points overnight and will at least put him in the race for Group B darts on Thursday and Friday, even if maybe the race for first place could be a little bit hairy scary for him, considering that the winner of Cox and Thornton will open up a four-point buffer over him with a win. Thoughts on Gary Stafford as the first leg, day's gone on. First throw first. Game yeah, on. I think, he, I think he'll be much happier. I think there was positive signs yesterday. He's looked a lot more settled today. Of course, he was another one of our late call-ups, and that's that's always tough. 58. It's always really tough because you're not necessarily coming into the unknown, but when you have a planned tournament or, a, or in this case, as in a, a group-type event, now you already have your mindset. You're already pre-planned and getting ready, and then all of a sudden, oh, 60. and then you're just boom, thrown in. It's it was never going to be easy. But we've seen plenty of 180s from him today. That little highlight reel, 94. 58. That will end up on the cutting room floor. 
If you're Neil Duff, what would you have done? For Chaz Barstow, he's local enough that he can just go back home. and he, He's 60. commuting to and from the venue. But for Neil Duff, obviously, he would have originally booked hotels for Portsmouth for five days. Would you go back to Northern Ireland, come here on Wednesday, or would you just come to Portsmouth a couple of day, days early and just stay stay here for a couple of days? 50. Yeah, just just keep it as planned. And Well, there's that tournament on Wednesday, isn't there? Uh, the Phoenix? Yes, the Phoenix Club. The Phoenix Club. I'd probably get myself over to that, playing that as a, a bit of preparation. Of course, he'd have been playing all weekend anyway in the Isle of Man. He'd probably just write Monday off and put that down to travelling. He'd probably tick over, have a couple of hours practice today. 100. And again, I'd probably nip to that Phoenix Club Wednesday night. It's always a good standard over there. Always a good, good, solid, strong field. Plenty of players to, to test yourself against. Uh, 140. And Murph and... Chris Murphy's on the ranking list. Is he? Yeah. Go on, son. He's won three matches. That's impressive. Um, yeah, and then just, just come in Thursday and, Samuel Rikai, and, and get stuck straight into it. I mean, he's he's vastly experienced anyway, isn't he? He won't be... He'll be going into this uh, with his eyes wide open. Game shot on the first leg. Sam Kankip. Can't get yeah, an 18 dart hold. Second leg, it's Gary to throw first. Game on. And as you say, Charles is, is he Winchester? Is mm. Yeah. Just at the M27. Yeah, he'll be fine. He would have gone home. And again, probably just sort of 100. Over. Ever had the joys of going to Winchester, Mace? Yeah, that's for a, that's. I'll, I'll tell. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you in the in the break. <laughs> but it is a beautiful place, isn't it? It's a. It's an old, an old old. Is it? A, what was he? What would it be regarded as? A town? I think it was the old ca the first capital of England. Yeah. It is beautiful. Some stunning old buildings there. A couple of nice boozers, I've heard. 100. This is kind of the hors d'oeuvre before the main course, which is Robert Thornton against Lee Cox. It's the final game of the session. The winner of that will be top of the table overnight. Then we'll return tomorrow morning, 9.30 on Sporty Stuff TV for the conclusion of Group A. That's at this point of the week where we see where the fixtures oh, lie on the Wednesday as Kankit gets herself Gary a match. It's been a while since we've seen one of them. Yeah, it certainly has. And important for for Sam to put in a, a bit a bit, a bit of a performance here. It'd be disappointing with his fifty five. Sam you recall game so far today and he wanna end the day on a high and go into tomorrow with plenty of ambition. Fifteen. Gary requires seventy two. One of those. These tops. Game shot on the second leg. Gary the tops. So, um, oh, I'm feeling a little aggrieved Third there. Leg, Sam to throw first. Two dots at a double for 2 nil. Falsy four. This match will feel like a little bit of a four point because this is going to be the first game of tomorrow morning's session. Game two, Robert Thornton against Richie Housen. 100. Could do a lot of swaying in terms of this group. Yeah, you, I, I, I didn't mind the Wednesday because it sort of start the day and think, right. 99. I know what I need to do. You could be in this situation where even winning... Five out of five, you'd have to rely on other results, but at least you sort of have in your mind, well, I've got to win five out of five, or I've got to win four out of five, and that, that's a that's a better mentality. Seven. And again, it, it's hard for players that haven't played a lot of this Super Series because 
again, you can get yourself a little bit embroiled, and you, you've just got to treat it as, right, I'm playing five games today. 140. So if I lose one, maybe two at the most, but I'm playing five games today. Try and ignore the table over the course of the opening two days. 45. What about just getting yourself within striking position on the Wednesday? 100. One hundred. Sam, you require one hundred and eighteen. One one eight. One one eight. Got your number. Not on this occasion. He's going to be back with Stafford all the 78. way. Seventy-eight. Back on two four nine, and he squares up four tops after fifteen. Well, he'll be happy enough with that, averaging eighty-nine at the moment. One hundred. Sam, Sam you you almost feel 40. That winning just isn't enough here. He needs to just for his own sort of confidence. Game is, shot on the third in a, leg. A Sam Kankin. Something he can build on for tomorrow because today has been fourth leg. It's Gary to throw him. first. Game on. His averages today started off strong, didn't he? Eighty-eight, forty-one in his first game. And then at a 74 and a half. 41. And then back that up with an 87. So again, we were we were discussing this earlier. It's up and down across the 100. course of the day. When you, if you're playing a good one in your final game, you just sleep that a little bit more sweeter. 81. You'll look forward to tomorrow rather than dread it if you end with a really poor performance. You wake up, eyes open. 85. Raring to go. Not that that ever affects us, mate. It feels like we just shut our eyes and then open them. We went on Thursday night. Yeah. 83. Actually, Friday morning. Oof. Well, loving the Saturday now, remember? Half seven starts. We fancy a, a night at the darts. Doors open around 45. about 6.30. It's free. Head over to www.dartshop.tv. 85. Fifty-eight. You can also get tickets for a plethora of exhibition events as well. Yeah, lots of big events with the biggest names in the sport. One hundred. Still not got the signed Chris Mason face mask on there yet, though, have they? No. Not yet. Fifty-nine. Gary you require one hundred and eleven. Good leg, bad leg, good leg, bad leg. Well, Seventy. The one five four. Sam, you require one hundred and fifty-four. It'll feel like one. Yes, fifty-four. Ooh, double seventeen. Game Have some of that, fourth leg. Sam Kankin. Sam Kankin. Oh, he's got one for the highlights reel himself. <clears throat> Just when it looked like Gary Pitt Stafford was going to level his game back up at game two apiece, Kankit has found something inspired, and now he has the darts for the match. Double 17 in terms of PDC 96. darts. 96. Double that's hit the rarest, isn't it? It's of all the doubles on the dartboard. Something like a two, three year streak where the double 17 wasn't hit at all at the World Championships.
58. The second, I don't know, the second 180 of the match. Sam had one in leg two. 45. That's one thing. He has it at least 180 pretty much in every match he's played today, hasn't he? Hit two in his opening match, Gary Stafford. 43. Then it won in his match against John Nelson. Won against Richie Harrison. Two last time out. Faulty. Cox, and he's had one here, so. Oh, we picked that out a little earlier, didn't we? Over 0 0.5. 11 to 10. Absolutely by Faulty four. On the opening race, mate. 140. That's all Vega placed. Oh, that was your. Uh, oh. Uh, who won it? Let's have a look. 100. Gary Ricard in 56. Sam, you require 160. <laughs> 82. Gary, you require 40. <clears throat> no, to stay in the match. Will be a break of throw. Game and shot on the fifth a break of throw. Gary in the leg, a 16 dart break. Opportunity here with a hold to take. Sick though, it's Gary to oh throw first. Boy. Yeah, I was right. Sam was too Game eager. On. Thought I'd uh, muddled my numbers up there, but it is Gary who has the darts. Yeah, holds here. It's also decider and 96. In the final leg, just ask MVG against. Andrew Gilding. <coughs> 59. Gold actually came up as one of the questions last night at the, uh, at the quiz. 140. Actually, so, did, so did Seven Nation Army. Now, Charlie Quarterfine, our referee, it was named the artist. He went S, thinking it was the stripes and not the white stripes, which was W. Sorry, Char. 45. Who was, who was on the quiz team last night? Me. Hugh, who's spotting for the next couple of days. Charlie 58. and Taylor, our excellent scalper, who inputs all the scores into the board, does a brilliant job. You don't miss a dart with Taylor around. 61. Does not look like it's going all the way. 80. Oh, let's go skip on. I've got to sit down interview with Barzi and shoulders at the gym today. 81. Gary, you require 127. More broccoli and chicken and then bed. Thanks. Another night gone. Another day over. In my mundane life. The dream, aren't you? 87. Defer squares up. For tops. For free apiece. Well, he hit it after 15 darts in one in leg five. You replicate that here in leg six. 100. Gary require 40. 80. Game shot on the sixth leg. Well, you couldn't have Gary picked Stafford. two more contrasting darts, but it doesn't really matter from Gary Stafford's perspective because 
We're going all the way. Southern final leg. It's Sam In our to throw first. match of Game the day. On. Actually, when you look at the stats throughout the course, they only think third time all told we've gone to a decider. Stafford was involved in one against John Nelson. He won that for free. And then the other one, John Nelson beat Robert Thornton by four legs to three. Yeah, we're still trying to work that one out. Answers on a postcard. That's a super series. Yep. Certainly not the first and certainly won't be the last. 59. One hundred and forty. When he gets that throw right, it just doesn't look like he can miss. Just harnessing it on a more consistent basis. Yep. Eighty-five. And that will come not only with practice, but actually just playing it in this kind of environment. But over and over and over again, it just becomes automatic. Fifty-seven. You ask one of the the, the top top pros uh, and try and one hundred analyze everything that goes on. It's uh, I just throw, just automatic repetition. Fifty nine. Sam, you require one hundred and thirty four. Taking out one five four. I'm going to add one three four to that list. Ninety four. Oh my goodness, that was too close for comfort. Yeah, a shake of the head, a puff of the cheeks. Well, three consecutive legs. Tops has been left after fifteen. Thirty. Sam, you require forty. To move him on to ten points in this group, can Kit want tops? Game can Kit shots finds tops. And the match. Sam and he Kanker. puts himself within a squeak of qualification. He's going to have work to do on Wednesday for years to get through Group A. He will be four points off the top of the table come what may come the first game of tomorrow. But can Kit, a 4 3 winner against Gary Stafford, doing so with an 82.22 average. The highlight being that 1 5 4 checkout as he gets the better of Stafford in a last leg decider. While our final game of the day, we'll see it will be top of the table overnight as Lee Cox takes on Robert Thornton. And that's coming up after this short break.
And so Tuesday's tungsten tossing here at the Moda Super Series is about to come to an end with a tussle at the top of the table. It's Robert Thornton and Lee Cox actually in third place, separated by Richie Housen to top place Thornton. But all three of those players on 12 points, meaning the winner of this match will have the outright lead overnight and going into the final day of play in Group A, where, remember, the winner of the group gets a place at finals night on Saturday. So a chance for one of this pair to put themselves in pole position. It was the first match of yesterday's play. Cox got off to a poor start, beaten 4-0 by Thornton in that one, but he has bounced back with some excellent displays, and the Scotsman, Robert Thornton, has seemed to be the man to beat. Here we go, then. Let's get it on. The last match of the day in the company of Chris Mason and Henry Deacon. Thanks, Murph. Well, Myself and Henry were discussing the prospect of this one and potentially on what we've seen from, from them today, mouth-watering, but I can't ignore the final game yesterday of Thornton where he was disappointing in losing 4-1 to Gary Stafford and in his match last time out, only averaged just over 80, didn't he? <coughs> Yeah, I mean, I suppose the caveat is both players know the significance of this one. And yeah. so there's going to be a real heads down mentality from the pair. And on, on the back of yesterday, Robert had a... First leg, it's eight, Lee to throw nine first. Nine-hour drive Game down on. from Scotland on Sunday. And said he didn't particularly sleep well on Sunday night. And you don't tend to after a drive of that distance. You're pretty wired from... Concentrating. 60. And caffeine. Yeah, and caffeine. But they went 6-5, to five, Lee Cox. 8-13, to 13, Robert Thornton. 60. But himself and Housen have been well, players of the day so far. But certainly this man has chipped in. 123. Both yesterday and today, he's produced one match with 100-plus average. Yesterday, 100 was against John Nelson, 103.66, four out of four on the doubles, a personal best for him, and he was on target to break his 60. personal best in consecutive days, but didn't quite happen in the end. But a 4 1 win, 100.23 the average, three one eighties, and 80% on the doubles, four out of five. Well, that's been a key factor of Thornton's game today, the amount of 180s he's hit. <clears throat> Been a staggering amount. 31 over the course of the 95. day. 95. Robert, you require 161. 26 yesterday, which was decent. 31 so far today. Number 18. Ooh, 49. Door. 57. Robert, you require 112. Old faithful. 72. Lee, you require 106. So Cox 106 for the opening leg with the throw, remember. 54 for 32. Gets it. Double 16. 74. Robert, you Whisker require of a 40. wire away. So Thornton returns for tops Game for that opening leg, leg break. Robert Thornton. And it is full advantage to the Thorn. Make a throw. 1 0 up. Second leg, it's Robert just to throw first. just looks so settled, doesn't Game he? Business-like in this final match of the day. A costly. One at 32 85. off the 106 beat. For Lee Cox in around about 10 minutes or so. 100. 60. 30. Again. I'm going to have another. 140. 
I've mentioned this was... 59. Our opening match of the session yesterday. It was dominant from Robert Thornton. 4-0 with a 9109 average, a 146 checkout. 100. Four out of six on the doubles. Tidy. Well, let's finish, actually, of the group is that 154 from Sam in the last match, wasn't it? So you consider some of the dance we've seen so far this week actually represents a bit of a surprise. You find a route just above. He's had to move all the way across to try and find a way. Now back down he goes. 30. Not bad. 10. 10 plus finishes today. Staggering numbers. Twice as many as yesterday. Robert, you so our prediction 86. that today was going to be superior to yesterday Game is shot the second leg. proven Robert right. Thornton. Thornton takes out the 86 in two. 17 dart hold. Currently averaging 91.09 and is 66% on his doubles, which is exactly what he was in his game against Lee Cox yesterday. <clears throat> One hundred. And you want that four nil too. <laughs> Sixty. Forty. Sixty. Ninety-five. Very important. Final dart there. Lee Cox. Poor visit there. Thornton would have been all over it. Twenty-six. Twenty-six the hard way, Robert. An element possibly of walls being hit. Yeah. 140. It's, it's literally just a, not necessarily a, it's a combination. It's a, a physical, but a mental thing. You just are exhausted in, in both departments. And these four 43. Lee, you require 126. Well, you're up at around six. Your sleeping pattern is completely disjointed. You're in here from half seven. You're practicing until your opening 86. game. And then in between matches, you're ticking over on the practice board. And it just leaves you jaded. And again, it's, it's 60. mentally dealing with Lee, everything you as well. 40. Game it's shot on the third turn, leg, isn't he? Lee Cox. 17 darter, just a hold. Going to need the break back. Fourth leg, it's Robert to throw In first. In football, they say 2 is a very dangerous scoreline. It could turn out to be one here for Robert Thornton. And that low dart is another example of... 93. Tiredness. Does recover well with a treble 18. 125. 59. Maybe wrong, but for some reason I think Lee's a. 140. He's definitely in the trade somewhere, isn't yeah. he? In the building industry, I'm pretty sure he told me. 66. I will double check for tomorrow, so he'll be, he probably won't be as physically affected. 140. Looks the pressure of the two, doesn't he? 
It's difficult when you're playing some of the early matches and then you're having to play the whole day and you're playing the last match on it. Well, every, every player gets a gap 96. as well. And it's, it's, again, it's it's the the five times of of emotionally getting yourself up and then calming yourself down and then Game shot on the taking lane. the adrenaline back Lee up. Cox. But that's, uh, that will do his adrenaline no problem because that was an 11 dart break of throw. Yeah, and it's just, again, it's just dealing Pit with that. Lee to throw first. <clears throat> Game on. There's only so many times you can light the fire. One That's a spark. And Be the lighting of the blue touch paper. That's a 95 good. average now. An inferno. 135. Eleven darter and then backs it up with a a nine maybe. One hundred and forty. <laughs> we'll, we'll take a ten. Bill. <laughs> One hundred and eighty. Just saying, where's that come from? We only could have found it a couple of seconds ago. He's still one on his leg. 90. Well, the trouble 20 would have put him on 36 for that opportunity of a turn. Ball here for Robert. 130. Lee, you're requiring 91. Double 10. Ball to left double 8. Meant the right way, in my opinion, the bigger target. 51. Robert, you require 56. Tops for Thornton. 16. Big chance that has come and gone. Is that the beginning? Lee, you require 40. Of the end. Game shot on the feet. Lee Cox play. now is a leg away from the victory post. 3 2, he leads. 13 data. Averaging 95.72. 60% in terms of the doubles first. percentage of ratio. And he's a leg away now from a win that would put him top of the group paid table. 96. Going into the final day's action here at the Super Series. A reminder we're back tomorrow morning from 9 30 a.m. 100. On Sporty Stuff TV. And the Moda Super Series YouTube channel where we will see this group come to a conclusion. But if you're tuning in via 95. the MSS Darts YouTube channel, then don't forget to give us a subscribe. Because on top of the live coverage that we bring you six days a week, we also have bonus behind-the-scenes content for you to enjoy. Got a chat with Glenn Dummett on there. Chat with Paul Nicholson on there. We'll have other bonus content to come in the not-too-distant future. Plenty of tungsten treats for 140. you. 140. 85. Well, but fine, distinctively, have a lot more pace now. Let's just finish on 130 with the darts. 97. Robert, you require 130. Sixty-five. Lee, you require 104. So 104 for the match for Lee Cox. To go top of the table overnight. Fifty-six. Robert, you require 65. Send us a distance. Tops is what Thornton wants. 25. But it doesn't go. And so Lee Cox returns for 48 to Lee be the table topper overnight to lead the charge going into the final furlong on Wednesday. Tops is a double of choice. 28. Two match darts come and Robert, gone. require 40. And so Thornton to send us all the way. Game shot on the seat play. Finds Robert Tops. Thornton. So the winner of this leg will Seven be the man at the summit overnight. First. It Game is on. as simple as that.
as far as Group A is concerned. 55. Trouble a start for Lee Cox. And Thornton punishes. 123. Steals the darts from the London captain. 45. 96. 40. Twenty-four. Couple of trebles here would change the complexion of this leg. One hundred. And that is exactly what Lee Cox finds, leaving two two one after twelve. Thornton on two five eight, but looking to make inroad. One hundred. Leaves himself on a finish, but. Cox can leave it much handier. But that's a slip into the single five. AC five. Good recovery with the last start. You could see the slight exhale of breath there. Thornton can't find a match winning 158. What can Cox do with a 136? It may have Lee to go because Thornton has left himself on 60. Another one of them. Double eight. One hundred and twenty. A whisker of a wire away Robert, you for winning in style. 60. And so Fordson gets his chance to go top of the group overnight. Double top for double ten. Fives. It's 55. getting tense. Both players have had the chance. Both players have had the opportunity. Lee, you require eight. Are these the most crucial darts we will see in this group, A. Eh? Game shot. As it is Lee and Cox, who is the Lee man Cox. who gets over the line. It will be he who is top of the table going into the final day's action here in group, A. Eh? Both players had darts for the match, but it is Lee Cox who managed to sink that match-winning double, averaging 90.35, four out of nine on the doubles, including a 96-high checker. It is he who will be top of the pile going into the final day in Group A. One final thing for us to do today, and that is to get the thoughts and analysis of Chris Mason, who is up on the balcony with Chris Murphy. He certainly is, Henry, and uh, Mace and Henry have been doing all those Cheltenham puns today, and it's just like Lee Cox has just come up on the on the outside and, and nicked it at the post today. Yeah, pr yeah, pretty much. We could sense the importance from, from both the players of that final match, especially going into tomorrow. And, and I said it in comms a little earlier, it's... A lot of this is how you end the Tuesday going into the Wednesday. You want to you wanna end day two on a high and you'll just sleep that little bit better and you'll go into tomorrow with a bit of confidence. And Robert Thornton up to that point was pretty much player of the day with Richie Howson. But yeah, he's uh, come out the pack, hasn't he, Lee Cox? Yeah, let's see confirmation of that with the Group A table. One day left to play, then it's Cox that leads the field. But then two players on 12 points, including Robert Thornton. I have to say as well, Mace, you and Henry did miss a trick because, of course, the same year Robert Thornton won the World Masters, Robert Thornton won the Champions Chase, didn't he? A jockey, yes, Robert Thornton. So yes, maybe that's exactly. a, a good yeah. omen for him this week. But Richie Housen certainly in the mix as well. Yeah, well, and, and Sam Kankit as well. He, he's, he's right in the mix as well. He's... Uh, he still, he still, he can still, if not win it, maybe if force a spot into into Group B. And a lot of players will be wanting to avoid Group C because that's going to be especially tough this week. But uh, Lee Cox in a, in a great position going into tomorrow. But Thornton and Housen will be supremely confident 
going into the final day's action tomorrow. And a day of purposeful practice, I guess, for Nelson and Stafford. Yeah, and again, just get you, getting used to the surroundings, especially more so for, for John Nelson. He's on debut, he came through the ADC qualifier, and, and at times today, both have, have, have shown some really good signs, and there, there's been been a lot more positives it probably won't feel that way to them but on reflection maybe watch it back on youtube and and just pick out the good moments don't worry about the bad moments they they take you nowhere yeah well there still is as chris has just said four runners really in the race when we go into the final furlong tomorrow lee cox leads away but with robert thornton leading the chasing pack well that champions chase will well and truly be on and it's set to be a close run thing see you tomorrow